testing mic, testing mic. Hello, hello, testing. Who's Mike? Sangam. You're muted. Sangam. You're muted, Abbas. You're muted, Abbas. Sorry, sorry. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. I'm wondering when you unmute yourself and say testing, testing, Mike, does that come on? Does that override the intro or does that? It does. I think I think everyone heard him. Everyone. Oh, <laughs> sorry, yeah, that was me. I thought you were about to join in with Abbas and you know add to the chorus or something. Yeah, Subhanallah, I'm glad yeah, you're going to start there for a second. I thought. Sorry for ruining the church music. <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> that's very, very, very naughty of you, uh, Nazem. <laughs> About uh, singing. So, guys, we're on episode 31, mashallah, of the uh, open forum, uh, as we can see on the screen there. Um, and um, so, yeah, so this is really for non Muslims. Uh, and you're here to really talk about anything you want to. Uh, the open forum is exactly that. It's open. It's an open floor. Um, so you can uh, you can come on and, and, and give us suggestions or you can uh, comment or criticize. Uh, but let's do it with some etiquette. Let's do it with some manners, inshallah. Let's have a nice discussion. Um, brothers, have you, how, how have you all been today? Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Very well, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, just uh, so if, I think the link should be already out uh, uh, below the description, as it says there. Uh, if you'd like to get on, I, I would really advise you to get on uh, pretty early on because we tend to get a full house uh, very, very quickly. And then uh, often we have at least four or five people sometimes waiting in the back uh, backstage and we can't get you on because the stream tends to go on for three or four hours. So, inshallah, uh, guys, what, what, are we ending the stream today, inshallah, at mid, midnight? Yes, is that right? Mashallah. So then we've got to tell the guests that if you want to get on, you need to really get on early. Otherwise, midnight is creeping up on us very, very quickly. Um, uh, 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 Nazem, how are you doing? You all right? Uh, I'm good, thanks. Um, sorry I missed Speaker's Corner today. I wanted yeah, to go, was, but there uh, weren't any trains then. Um, well, the weather was really... Um, that as well, yeah. Windy and a lot of rain today. Actually, did you go? So, did you go to Speaker's Corner? No, no, not today. Uh, okay. Again, it was just the wind and the, and the weather. I actually saw that um, online. I think Mansoor, uh, Subhanallah, with his umbrella, it, the whole Speaker's Corner was practically empty. Yeah, there was Mansoor there with oh. his umbrella, and he was talking to some, I think, American, uh, American Jewish. Uh, I don't whether it was a brother or a sister. Oh, or, or, I, I can't remember. It was, it was two people anyway. Though. Uh, guys, we've got a couple of people in the back chat, backstage. You need to put your camera on. We need to identify you. Uh, we can't get you on without identifying you. Sorry. So if your device is for some reason not connected uh, or, um, uh, you, you know, you can't show us your, your identity, uh, we're, we're not going to be able to get you on the stream. So that's uh, very, very important. Uh, you have to have your camera on. We'll introduce you. We'll give you an opportunity to switch your camera off if you want to. And uh, if you want to switch it off, you can switch it off before you come live. Hamza, what are you thinking about? You've got your finger there like this and you're contemplating, your eyes are squinting. What's going on? I'm contemplating when my camera's going to start giving me the matrix effect. How comes it doesn't do it on any other stream, only on EF Dower stream? This is just no. absolutely it's doing weird. It. It's doing it now. It's doing it now. I don't know. Subhanallah. That is, that is just totally weird. So, guys, we've got four or five of you waiting in the back chat now, backstage. None, none of you have got your cameras on. Uh, as I say, we cannot get you on uh, if your camera is not on and we can't identify you. Um, and also, just another reminder, a couple of Muslim names, I think, potentially in the back. Uh, if you are Muslim, then please, this is not the stream for you because uh, uh, this is a stream designed specifically for, for non-Muslims. Um, and if, you want to, if you're Muslim and you want to come onto the stream, then you need to come onto the Dawah Clinic. Can I ask a quick question, Abbas? A very yeah, quick question. Sure. sure. Is this stream for Muslims or non-Muslims? This is a non-Muslim stream, yes. Okay, just clarifying that. Yes, Mashallah. yes. Yeah, because we've got a couple, a good couple of names in the back there. With uh, Ahmed, I'm sure your name is a, a Muslim name. So uh, unless you are non-Muslim, then you can put that in the private chat, and then we can uh, we can uh, you know, take you on. Um, but you need to have your cameras on. We need to identify you, guys. I was Mashallah really, really moved by the Ummah Welfare Trust stream. Um really overwhelmed as to the brothers and sisters mashallah 
Uh, maybe some of them, maybe most of them are subscribers. Maybe a, a lot of them were not our subscribers, but just the mashallah, the generosity uh, of the people. Um, we aimed to get thirty thousand pounds, mashallah, um, uh, for the charity, and alhamdulillah, I think it's about eighty-two thousand pounds. So that is really, mashallah, testimony to all of you brothers and sisters, mashallah, for your encouragement and your taking part and your mashallah donating. Uh, but also, I think a lot of you, mashallah, you recommended the streams to people, to friends, to families. Uh, the, the stream is obviously uh, uploaded, so you can go back. Uh, I think it's the last stream we did, which was on Friday. The links are still there and they are still active to donate. Uh, the donations uh, that Umar Welfare Trust do are 100% to the causes. Um, and it's a, it's, a, uh, it's a charity that I really trust and I've, mashallah, donated to almost exclusively. I think a lot of the brothers here, mashallah, donate regularly to Umar Welfare Trust as well um, because of this 100% um, charity donation. So I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm going over old territory and some of you have already heard all this before, but it really is a good cause. So let's try to push it to 100,000, inshallah, ta'ala. Uh, 100 pounds feeds a whole family uh, for a whole month and it gives them blankets and it gives them other things that they can definitely be very useful in this very cold weather. So please do go onto that stream, get the links. If you can donate a little bit more, donate regularly, please do that. Uh, Agnostic, uh, do you want to just give me a quick thumbs up? Lovely. We're going to get you on next. You can you can switch your camera off if you want to. Hi, Agnostic. Welcome to the stream. So thank you very much. And uh, where are you? Uh, where are you tuning in from, Agnostic? Well, I'm from India. You're from India, okay. And uh, were you pre previously religious, or are you? Uh, is, I mean, are you really agnostic, or is that just your name? No, I'm uh, not an atheist. I doesn't associate myself with atheism. Right. But I'm were, not. Uh, were you ever religious? Yeah, I was, but there are so many, you know, questions in my mind that I can't say that I'm religious. What religion were you, if you don't mind me asking you? I was uh, Muslim. I'm. I think I'm still a Muslim, but there are, I think, uh, various doubts in my mind. Right. So that, uh, you, so are, are you are you agnostic or would you say you just have certain doubts in your mind? Because there is a difference between ag agnostic means you don't know whether there is a God or there isn't a God. There are. Uh, I mean, the doubts are that kind of serious that. Uh, I can't either myself call. A, a, a religious person anymore i understand but do you believe that there is a creator of the heavens and the earth or do you do you doubt that that that's a, that's the case i think i'm not sure epistemically that's why i had written that i'm ag agnostic so and that's fine okay so we've we've established that you are not convinced uh, that uh, God exists. Can I ask you, what is it that has led you to question the existence of God? The uh, thing that has led me away uh, from, I can't say from God, uh, but from religion is definitely the uh, the evolution of living organisms when I learned about it mm. few years back and I got many uh, doubts through it. So, so do you think that if evolution is true, then that somehow proves that God doesn't exist? Is that what, what you think? <laughs> no, I don't think that it will prove that God doesn't exist. So then he, so then would it be fair then that evolution is not the reason why you disbelieve in God then? <laughs> no, 
because uh, i think i am uh, i was from a religious background right and uh, i was uh, uh, you know from uh, islam so we have no problem with uh, natural causes accepting that natural causes had effect so evolution is not the uh, you know the reason that i can say that i had uh, doubts about uh, my religion so so what what are, But, so because because i asked you what caused you to doubt the existence of god and you said evolution now i asked you whether evolution disproves the ex existence of god and you said no it doesn't and now you're saying that actually it wasn't evolution so let me ask you again what what was it that made you doubt the existence of god if it's not evolution what was it then the thing that uh, made me doubt uh, the religion is the human evolution is the perspective of uh, the evolution of humans not evolution of any other organisms because it doesn't matter because scripture is silent about the evolution of other animals can, Abbas, can i just interrupt a second please Go on. wait why are you here agnostic have you got a question have you got what what what's the script I am uh, here because I want to uh, know that uh, how uh, you people, you know, deal with uh, these kind of things. So, because so you are I a Muslim. You are. So you are a Muslim. Who's having doubts? I think I had uh, very serious doubts. I can't. Uh, you know, the doubts are. I had already told you that uh, human evolution is problem. for me that is stopping me from what's the, what's the problem and... what's the problem we're just trying to get to the point here what's the problem i had already uh, explained that it is the evolution of humans and also the there are also other uh, aspects i don't take uh, philosophical aspects very seriously like problem of evil is not problem for me or any other philosophical problem but uh, there are scientific problems like human evolution what's the problem and what's the problem you keep saying there's problems like human evolution what is the problem of human evolution according to what you understand uh, because if we have uh, evolved from already existing animals then the religious scripture that is the quran doesn't agree uh, right. with this concept because it has uh, said that god has created humans with his own hands right. and you and you believe darwin and evolution is proven well there are uh, i think uh, fair amount of evidence for it what's the evidence the evidence uh, are uh, the homologous organs what's that Imran, do you want to come in there and and explain to ag agnostic? Um, because even even I mean, even Richard uh, Dawkins, the, the let's say the, oh, I think the that's um, not sure. I mean, even he says that evolution does not prove or disprove God, but it's an argument that works, so I use it. Now he's an evolutionary biologist who believes evolution to be, uh, in in his own words, he says. as proven as the world is round this is what he says this is what he argues and yet at the same token he argues that it doesn't prove or disprove the uh, whether god exists but he simply uses the argument because it works but in any case uh, dr imran if you want to just uh, add something in there nothing hamza was along the right line so what you said the evidence was homologous organs yes yes between whom homologous between whom and there are also 
genetic. But before you move on to something else, homologous between whom? Who is the homology between when you're talking about organs? Uh, I had already uh, told you that I had only a problem with human evolution. So we had uh, homologous organs with uh, the primates. For example, there are chimpanzees, there are gorillas. So how does how does homologous organs prove anything? Well, homology is uh, the argument for common ancestry. It's, a, it's an assumption, yes? Yes, yes, it's an assumption. Yeah, so how does homology prove anything? Homology prove anything? Because there are uh, so many similarities that no, no, that's agnostic. You said it was an assumption, yes? And you're saying that the you're talking about the evolution of humans, yeah? So I'm asking you for homology between which two creatures are you specifically referring? And you refer to chimpanzees. The theory is that chimpanzees and humans would have separated six, you know, six million years back. This is the theory, yeah? Now, so what organs are you saying that are homologous between which creatures? Because, you know, every creature has a similar... Uh, organ systems what does that prove it's an assumption that's made homology is an assumption that's made what does yes, it prove? Yes, it's, an, it's an assumption and there is yeah, also so how does an uh, assumption prove anything i'm asking you the question well it's a uh, uh, you know it's a good assumption because for example if we see the uh, cat family uh, no one had a uh, problem in accepting that uh, cats and tigers, etc., had uh, uh, share a common ancestor in somewhere in the past. So applying this to also to the primates. No, uh, no, but, no hang on a sec, uh, agnostic. You just tell me that if someone makes an assumption about cats, that this assumption, you're building assumptions upon assumptions. You're not actually giving any evidence. I want you to give me a reason why we should accept the assumption. Homologous uh, structures are uh, not only, uh, is not the only evidence uh, for. Now, don't the change the evidence now. Also... Give the strongest evidence you think it is. And so you're saying homology is not enough, right? We're moving on from homology. Yeah, homology uh, is an assumption. Yeah. You're right about that. So we can't use that, right? We have to use something else, yeah? You know, if there are uh, striking uh, similarities between two organisms, so how can it be explained otherwise? For example, uh, if, if there is eco-location yeah, in you're, that... What you're saying to me is that because of because things look similar, I'm going to make an assumption about that. Now, that's not an evidence. That's just your assumption. So what's, what's, not, what's not changing is the creature. What's changing is your perspective. You're saying, I'm looking at these things. Yeah, this arm looks like that arm, therefore they must be related some way. That's just an assumption, right? I'm asking you, what, how are you going to evidence that? Because there is not... Uh, homology is uh, not only in one part here, in case of uh, chimpanzees and humans. For example, there is echolocation in bat and dolphin. Yeah, Nobody not, says that it is evidence for common ancestor, because this is homoplasy. No, but they, they are, but, no, hang on a similar. second. Hang on a second. But they are homologous. Those two, those two examples you gave, echolocation, are two things that are equal that we see, two evolutionary. So if you were to take that and see, you would see something that is similar. But now you're saying that that similarity, we have to ignore it. Why are you ignoring that similarity? You're saying this, you're giving it another word. That's the, the posh word. You're saying homoplasy. But why are you ignoring that? Why are you ignoring that particular uh, similarity? Because there is a similarity in only one system here. For example, the eco location. Otherwise, dolphin and bat are, uh, you know, very distinct from each other. But in case of primates, we have uh, striking similarities, no, no. and there is also molecular no, no, no. One evidence. Second, one second. You're... What's the difference? They they both have. Um... Both are mammals. They both have. Uh, they give birth to live young. Um, they breastfeed their animal, their, their creatures. They have similar bone structures, although bone, bone structures are adapted. But they have. Uh, then and and they also share echolocation in 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 similarity. Now, why is it that that similarity 
you're assuming you're now because now you're making another assumption. You saw another one set of data and you're saying, I'm assuming that these are right, that these are related. And then you see another set of data and you're saying, I'm assuming these are not related. I'm asking you, why are you doing that? What, what are you basing that upon? Because there are uh, only a similarity in one system in case of bat or dog. No, I've given you an example of the similarity in other systems. Having lungs, even though one's a sea creature and one is not a sea creature, uh, giving birth to live young, breastfeeding your, your animals, having the same bone structure uh, overall, just slightly modified for their different things. But what's and they, and also and also they have echolocation in common. So what is why are you looking at one and saying these are related, they're homologous, and you're looking at another and you're saying these are not related, these are homoplasias. Why, why are you doing that? I'm asking you for the evidence for doing that. I'm not uh, doing it. It's the scientists that are doing it. Yes, I'm asking you the question because you've accepted what they're saying, yes? Well, uh, I'd already uh, told you that it doesn't concern me. The only thing that concerns me is, for example, in homologous structures, we have, if we look at the hand, we have carpal, metacarpal, and these five bones. Why all the, uh, you know, uh, for example, the higher higher order organisms have these five bones in their limbs? But what is that? They have not... What assumption are you going to make based upon that? What assumption are you making based upon that? The scientists had made the assumption that... Yeah, so why are you accepting history. what the scientists say, my brother? Why are you accepting what the scientists say? How can it be expl you know, explained in any other way? How you are going to explain it then? No, so, no, so I'm asking you the question, why are you accepting what the scientists say? Because I, because I want to understand what you are trying to, how you're coming to this. So you've taken something which is science. We haven't even discussed what science is. That's a really important topic that can maybe come later. You've accepted it hook, like hook, line, and sinker. I ask you for evidence for the assumptions that are made within it, and you say I believe the scientists. So now I'm asking you, why are you believing what the scientists believe? Are you empirical or are you blind following? That's the question I'm asking you. Are you using evidence for yourself that this is my evidence I use? Or are you saying that I blindly follow the scientists because I respect, you know, the white man doing the science in the West, you know, who the name professor in front of his uh, name, and I'm going to accept him because my ancestors were conquered by them in the past, and whatever they say has to be right, and you're blindly following them. That's the question I'm asking you. Are you blindly following them, no, brother, or are you, are, you, are you looking at the evidence <laughs> and to a conclusion about what they're saying? I had not uh, said any of the things, and it's the problem also with atheists. When I talk with atheists, they also use this kind of ad hominems. So no, it's not I don't an ad hominem, it. brother. It's not an ad hominem. What I'm saying to you is I'm, I'm describing two things. I'm asking you why, on what basis are you believing what the scientists are saying? And what you've said is, what you've said really is that, well, they say it and I'm taking, I'm accepting it. So then, then the assumption is, why are you accepting what they're saying? Now, common, and I'm describing a common phenomenon. There is an inferiority complex amongst people when it comes to Western scientists, particularly people who have previously been conquered by them. India is a prime example. Pakistan, Bangladesh, these countries are a prime example. You go to these places, they, if, it, if, if the book God Delusion was written by Professor Patel, nobody would have read it. But because it was written by Professor Dawkins from you know, Oxford, everyone sort of swaying themselves all over it, even though most of it is gibberish. Most of it is gibberish, it's non-scientific, it's philosophical, which not, is not even the field of uh, Professor Dawkins. And even he, has said, even he has that... said that evolution has no impact on whether or not God exists. So the question I'm asking you is, you talked about homoplasy, you've talked about homology, you've accepted uh, these common ancestors uh, when it comes to something that, they, that is termed homoplasy, but you're not accepting common ancestry when you're naming something uh, homoplasy. And I'm asking you, why are you doing that? And you say the scientists do it. So I'm asking you, how are you accepting? Why are you accepting what the scientists say? The things you had uh, said uh, are uh, true in some cases, but there is uh, no inferiority complex or whatever in my mind, because I had already told you that I don't follow any, I don't link myself with atheism. I'm not talking about atheism. 
I'm talking about your acceptance of the scientific narrative in this particular case. It's nothing to do with atheism. You believe it. You're not an atheist. No, I'm not atheist. Yeah. So you believe it, though, don't you? If you give me other explanation for the homologous organs that are found, how will you explain them? What explains them better? If you give me an alternate explanation that makes more sense, I will accept your explanation. With what paradigm, my brother? Which what paradigm? That makes sense. No, with that what is paradigm? Logical. No, no, no. Not, I'm talking about sense. I'm talking about paradigm. Uh, you believe uh, So the paradigm of science is nothing except for material things exist, only matter and energy. There is no supernatural. Everything must have a natural explanation. This is the basic fundamental paradigm of science. Is this the paradigm you want the answer from? No, I'm not a materialist. Okay, good. So if you're not a materialist, I... then if you're not a materialist, then the answer, you've already read it. If you've read the Quran in the past, you've read the answer to that question. Allah is al -Bari. He is the evolver. And he made human beings with his own hands. Khalas. Makes perfect sense. Now, the question is, the paradigm I'm using is different from the scientific paradigm. So this is now no, no longer about science. It's no longer even about the, the data you're looking at. It's actually about your paradigm, how you're seeing things. What is science? Science assumes there are no non-natural explanations. And you've, you've, you're buying it hook, line and sinker, even to your metaphysical, metaphysical uh, paradigm. And that's the problem. I'm a methodological naturalist. I can do science. I can use science. But I'm a, a philosophically, I'm not a naturalist. I believe in a supernatural, as you say that you do. Now, if that's the case, then where, where the science cannot go, I don't take it. Science cannot discuss the, the existence of God. I don't use it for that. Science cannot explain miracles like the creation of the human being as a special creature. So I'm not, I don't interest in using science for that. Science is restricted to giving a natural explanation. So it has to look for these things. If you dig two skulls out of the ground and you look at them and they look similar, yeah, you can make any assumption you want about them. These could be aunties together sitting in a tree. They could be uh, unrelated creatures. You could do whatever you like. But that's just assumptions. So the question is, why are you accepting this? And which paradigm do you want the answer from? But as a uh, student myself of knowledge, I consider myself, uh, and I don't uh, uh, care, I, I will accept any kind of truth, whether it, whether I like the truth or not, I am, I will ask you uh, the question as a human being, that why a creator God who writes in his scripture that God, that God has separately created humans, why he would had uh, such striking similarities he has created that we are seeing it, that evolution has happened. Okay, so, so this is the same thing. You're mixing two paradigms together. What you're assuming is that because when, we, when you look at something, you see a similarity that therefore it has to be related. This is an assumption. You agree with that homology. But there is not only the assumption of homology. There are also the evidence of, for example, the chromosome 2 fusion theory for the human chimp common ancestry. And there are also human endogenous retroviruses that are also... So tell me about these. Tell me about these, please. Tell me about them. Start off with the chromosome evolution uh, fusion. Tell me about it. I don't had enough knowledge of human endogenous retroviruses. So why are you, why are you bringing... I can, uh, I can tell you, you about chromosome that? 2 fusion theory. Yeah, tell me about it, please. Tell me about it. It says... According to this uh, theory, the uh, chromosome, because in other primates, we, we have 24 pairs of chromosomes. And in humans, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. So one pair has allegedly fused together. According to this theory. And what? And, so what does that and mean? it explains that. What does it mean, brother? What does it mean? They say that this explains why humans have only 23 chromosomes and why no, others no, have no, no. 20, you're 24 pairs. You're, you're missing the point. Tell me about the fusion. Tell me what it would do.
what it would if you had a creature with 48 chromosomes and then suddenly two of two, one pair of chromosomes is, is moved radically like this what would happen to that creature there would be changes in the creature how many changes i can't say i had to read the paper first yeah how many places did it join from I don't have enough details, but I had read it about the basics of it, chromosome 2 fusion. Yeah, I think uh, this is the thing. My so why are you believing it if you don't know much about it? Because there is uh, the vestigial chromo uh, centromere. No, no. Why do you why, Listen, you, you said you didn't read about it. Why, do you, why are you accepting it? Because it can be verified empirically. Have you verified it empirically? The scientists have said. Have you that verified it empirically, my brother? Have you verified it empirically? I had taken the testimony of the scientists, like most okay, of the people. Okay, so do. this is what I'm saying to you. Thank you for admitting that you're following blindly. Yes, you don't know, isn't it? You accept the testimony. No, no, testimony is not blind following necessarily. No, 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 my friend. If you said that the well, you can test it empirically. Yes, you can test it empirically. But you're saying that you haven't done this. You've accepted the testimony of what they're saying. Sir, with due, why due have respect, you, so why how many you... persons in the world, even scientists, do themselves experiments, themselves in laboratory? Or do they uh, believe in testimony? Or do you deny testimony as a source no, of knowledge? No, no, hang on a second. Wait, wait, wait a second, wait a second. You're, 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 you're changing the, uh, the goalposts, yeah? It's very important to understand. So you say that you accept what the scientists say, yeah? So it's nothing to do with empiricism. It's nothing to do with anything else. You, because you haven't checked anything. You're not in a position to check you know, anything. No, I had also watched video of Dr. Usman Ali, who is a Muslim Ashari uh, scientist, who is a biologist, I guess. Have you checked I'd any also... of the science, my brother? Have you empirically checked any of the science? I think ninety percent of the people had not empirically checked. Okay, so why are you, why are you accepting why are you accepting this, my friend? Because if they give me good enough evidence and good enough arguments, then I have to contemplate on it because it will be epistemic hypocrisy. Then. So what was the evidence they gave you? They had said that uh, it has vestigial centromere. No, no, if I'm asking the evidence that they the gave past. you. I'm asking for the evidence they gave you that you looked at. What was the evidence that they gave you that you looked at? They say that uh, it will be a few, the fusion site will be present and it has. No, the what was the evidence that you looked at? Uh, agnostic, you're, you're not answering the question, my friend. What was the evidence that you looked at that they gave you? You said they gave you evidence and you looked at it. But there are uh, lots of scientific papers you can check them. I am not here to defend. I am not any evolutionary biologist. So then why are you bringing but, this as something that's causing you to make doubts? If there's something that you haven't checked, then you just accept what people say. My question is uh, simply that why there are so many striking similarities and there seems that evolution had taken place. How will you explain this? But what you're, you're making the assumption of the seeming, isn't it, my brother? Do you understand? Your, the assumption that you're making is that when I look at these things, I see something that's similar and therefore I'm going to make the assumption that these are related. This is, a, this is homology, right? That's the assumption. We're back to the first question. Why are you assuming that because there's an observation that these observations must be homologous? Why are you assuming this? Because I had already explained, uh, sir, that in other cases, for example, I had given you an example of echolocation. There is only one system that is No, no, but I've told you that that's here. not the truth. So, I've told you that that was not the case. There were many things that were similar. Bone structure was similar. He, uh, the boat, there were ma mammals. They gave birth to live young. They had uh, milk production organs. 
uh, the, all of these things, they were warm-blooded creatures. They, all of these things are, in, are similar. So you haven't given me anything to say that they're not, they could not be related somehow. No, so you, is they, not the, assumption, the assumption is made that these aren't related. And I I'll tell you why, because you're not telling me. I will tell you. It's because it doesn't fit with the theory. You know, when you make a graph and you say you plot all your points on the graph and then you have one point which is up here and it's not there. You know, that must be an anomaly. It doesn't fit my line. So you have this wonderful graph, line, perfect line, everything's fitting into it. And then one, one data point is not in your line. And you say, oh, this must be an anomaly. It doesn't fit my line. The problem is the line. It's not the actual data set. You need to explain the data set. Agnostic, do you so appreciate? You that? Agnostic, do you appreciate what Imran is actually getting at? Because what Imran is trying to explain to you, I think, in a much in a very, very detailed, methodical way, is that if you go to people to advise you on a matter who have certain assumptions that they build all of their arguments on, philosophical naturalism. In other words, there has to be a naturalistic explanation to whatever we uncover. OK, they are therefore only going to be able to theorize or have a hypothesis that fits within that pre uh, within that assumption, which is that it has to have a naturalistic explanation. Now, they'll give you a very elaborate um, uh, hypothesis or potential theory or a theory, in fact. But because it will always have to conform to that axiom, the underlying assumption of philosophical naturalism, they can only present that case to you. Do, do, do you appreciate that, brother? And because you don't have the tools, I, I mean, I don't have the tools to be able to decipher that often very complex information, okay, that I would perhaps say, yes, from a scientific paradigm, it looks like the strongest theory that we have. But Imran has already told you that if you're going to go to testimony, then surely the testimony of uh, of the Prophet Sallallahu or the words of Allah supersede all other testimonies, right? Now, how those two things marry together, i.e. the scientific reality of what we perhaps see or the interpretations that are being made and the theology, uh, how they marry up, we might not be able to necessarily be able to marry those up other than accepting the testimony of the Prophet ﷺ and accepting the words of Allah saying that he created human beings and he fashioned them and he created them. Now, even if that doesn't necessarily fit, fit to the theories that are currently prevalent, they are supernatural events. And supernatural events are outside of the uh, philosophical naturalism that underpins scientific knowledge. Well, can I just make a quick point? Sorry, go on, no, Iran. So I know it's, it may seem to you, Agnes, like I've avoided your I've avoided your question, but I'm not doing that. And and there are lots of we have lots of streams on evolution. There are some that are non-Dawah wise as well. We had uh, uh, Sheikh Abu Alia who also here did a, a two two streams on evolution. And I'm, I'm going to give you one. I'm going to give you one one paradigm, one one explanation that you can use, yeah, that you can understand. So, and this is from the paradigm of, of of accepting that there is a creator who created the universe, yeah. So, if if there is this creator who created the universe and he had uh, creatures that were on the earth, for example, and he was he his one of his names is the Ovova, and then he was evolving them. He can take a creature, and he can create that creature. And it could be looking like maybe other hominids that may have been around and put into it the soul, which makes it human, which makes that creature human and put it onto the earth. And it would look like part of the, the, the chain of events that may have gone on. But the difference is the soul. Do you understand? Now, that's, a, that's one explanation that's put forward by some people that you could use and that would be perfectly acceptable for you. Now, in that paradigm, nothing has changed. The, the man is a special creation created by, the creator, by Allah with his own hands and he has created, put the soul into it and he put the creature onto the earth. It's very simple. Now, the problem is, is that in the scientific paradigm, if that if everything is naturalism, you're still in the same place. Your scientists won't believe this because they are limited in what they can think about by the science itself. Because the science is, has blinkers. It's limited to only natural things. Yeah. It's not able to open its eyes and look around. But how can we 
you know, deal with the fossils that we had find. Tell, that me, are tell, the me, about the between... tell me about the fossils. For example, there are fossils that shows the transition uh, from the uh, Australopithecine to the genus Homo. How many fossils do you have? For example, they have Australopithecus afarensis. How many, that how they many call... fossils do you have, my brother? How many? Fossils? They have the fossil of Australopithecus afarensis. How, how many this, they fossils have do you have, my brother? How many fossils do you have? Because what you're saying is they found some bones and they called them this name. I'm not interested in this. Because the name the name is arbitrary and saying whether you know these things are linked is also it's an assumption. I'm asking you how many fossils do you have? What's how big is your data set? How many fossils do you have? Of which genus Homo or any any fossils that you have? How many fossils do you have? In genus Homo, they have uh, Homo erectus. They have Homo how habilis. Many, how many number, please? How many estimate? How many fossils do they have? I don't know the exact number. Twenty, thirty, forty. Have... I don't know. I can't say. How many? Tiny, a tiny fraction, maybe uh, 20, 30, 40 fossils, let's say, yeah? How many creatures were there? But this is a transition how from many, the quadrupedal being to the many, bipedal. That's... How many creatures were there? I don't understand your question. Okay, I'll explain to you the question. Your data set has to be representative. Do you understand what that means? Please if I if I get one if I have a medicine, I say this medicine will cure this illness. I get one person, I stick a needle in them, and I say, look, this person is cured. Can I say now, in all human beings, if they have this injection, this this injection will cure them from all illnesses? Can I make that claim? No. Okay. I need to, I need to have a sufficient number of, amount of data to be able to re reliably generalize. Yes. Yes. Okay, so when it comes to fossil record, we have less than 0.0001% of the available data, and you're making a conclusion about the whole from this 0.001% of the data. Is that reasonable? But the, what I want to uh, say no, I'm sorry, is that question, I'm not the one who is making a is conclusion. It, is it reasonable to do that? What is the alternate explanation? No, I'm asking. No, no. I'm, uh, before we go to alternative explanations, I want you to tell me. I want you to tell me if it's reasonable to do this, taking 0.001 percent of the date of of, of 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 information and generalizing it to 100 percent of the of the population. Is it reasonable to do that? Is there any dispute about this in philosophy of biology? Or... Yes, that's why I'm asking the question. It's the scientific community that has that is doing it. I am not personally. The, the question is not whether who's doing, doing it. The any... question I'm asking you is: Is it reasonable to do this? Is it is it okay to do this? Before Hamza comes on, and, uh... <laughs> I'm just itching to <laughs> come in there. He's stretching all his bones and his muscles. Honestly, talking of bones, uh, agnostic. Is there anything else that causes you doubt? One because second, one mean... second. Don't let him off the hook with this. Well, I mean, record. I think to be honest, it's, I think it's a done deal. To be honest, because I think agnostic is appreciated that he he doesn't really know the science. He's just uh, he <sighs> takes it as testimony. Uh, okay, and he, and and, but, and, and, uh, and even and, and scientists you know what, uh, take testimony. Please, sir. No, no, let agnostic. Me, and and, and, and the thing is, agnostic. I, the point here is that most of us would do the same thing when we make decisions. We take testimony. But I'm asking you, why are you denying the testimony of the Prophet sallam, and the words of Allah when he tells you a matter happened in a certain way, but you accept the testimony of somebody else who has philosophical naturalism as a foundational concept and they, they don't accept the fact that there are miracles or things happen outside of science. I'm just asking you why what, why, do, why are you doing it? That's why I'm asking you, is there anything else? Because so far, I think you have to admit, ag agnostic, you haven't provided any substantial, concrete, analytical or empirical reason. It's more to do with, I trust the scientists, 
So I believe uh, what uh, they're uh, saying. Let, let, let's just completely bury him on the fossil record. And whether it's him who gets buried and accepts, there are people who may believe what he believes. Uh, and, and let's just kind of demonstrate that this is evidence of nothing. It really isn't. So I just want to ask him, what does he think this fossil, this, as the doctor said, 0 0.011 percent, what do you think it proves? The scientist has proposed that we have a common ancestor with, with uh, chimpanzee. How, how, and does, the fossil, how does the fossil record prove that? Because there are transitions between the quadrupedal uh, ancestor of alleged ancestor, I will say, between humans and chimps, and there is transition like like from a genus Australopithecus. So genus home. I love that in Ostropotilus, whatever name you keep saying, as if like you're so intelligent. I think you want it written down somewhere and you just keep repeating it. The doctor asks you how many and you answer with that. I mean, is that your go-to word to sound intelligent? Okay, can you explain to me what the Cambrian explosion is and why it's a problem for you? No, it's not a problem for me. It's a problem for those people who... No, can you explain uh, to me what the Cambrian explosion that. was? And why it's a problem for you? Cambrian explosion is the sudden appearance of uh, complex organisms in the fossil record without there being any precursor, I guess. So why is that a problem for Cambrian. you? Not for me. It's a problem for those who uh, are Darwinists. Well, I am you're not Darwin, You're a Darwinist. You're no, hanging on to the coattails of Darwin. Yes, Mr. Jessup. Yes, Mr. Jessup. There's a stage coat coming, Mr. Jessup. You're like this. You're holding Every on to the scientists' coattails. And, and you're trying to throw their, what they believe, under the bus now. You're a Darwinist. You're, you're, you're trying no, no, to. No, no, I'm not a Darwinist. You are. Yes. Everything you're saying is Darwinism. <laughs> Why are you <laughs> so desperate to make me a Darwinist? I am not what, Darwinist. What are you then? Well, well, what are you? It, if it was like a Darwinist and talks like a Darwinist, it's a Darwinist. No, there are many mechanisms of evolution. It's what not necessary that propose? you accept it. What well, mechanism so, yeah. do you propose? So which mechanism other than Darwinian evolution are you proposing? Well, I think there is a good argument against Darwinism, like there is argument of irreducible complexity agnostic, by Dr. Agnostic, Michael B. Agnostic. You're not answering the question, my brother. What mechanism do you propose? I don't, uh, you know, believe that. I have no problem in believing that uh, the life, because I had already told you that uh, evolution has nothing to do with existence of God or not. It makes me doubt my religion. Look, look, That's Agnostic, what I had made, made in the beginning. And listen, Dr. Imran, listen, I had you need to answer direct questions. You said you're not a Darwinist. The doctor asked you very, very good. You said there's many mechanisms other than with Darwinism. Yeah? So you're asked a very straight question. Which mechanism do you propose? Now, your answer should be whatever <laughs> mechanism of the uh, evolution you, um, com you know, comply with. Which one is it? For example, Darwinist is like Richard Dawkins. I you're Darwinist. You've already said you're I not Darwinist. In, I am, I am uh, not. Listen, I don't have philosophy of blind watchmaker. You you're not a Darwinist. I am not Darwinist in that sense. We, you said you're not a Darwinist. You said there's yes, many yes, mechanisms of evolution. You said you're not a Darwinist, so stop talking about Darwinism and tell us what you are. We don't know what you're not. We want to know what you are. There are many other mechanisms of evolution. I want to know what you are. I am not uh, sure of which mechanism is uh, true, but I don't, uh, you so know. So which mechanism are you quoting, are you are you agreeing with? Are you quote trying to present the fossil record for and the chromosomes for? Which which mechanism? Most of the scientists are Darwinist uh, agnostic. So why are, you, why are you against the scientists? Because I had already told you that uh, I don't uh, follow anybody necessarily. Uh, because I had watched uh, various videos of Dr. Iyad Kunebi, and he has made very good arguments against Darwinism. So I am not like the person. I, I had already told you that I am not. Uh, I have no problem, no emotional reason. Rather, 
if anybody, if you are going to agnostic, you're not making yeah. sense, brother. You're not making sense. What you said, what you said initially was you said that um, you're not sure you 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 doubted religion because of evolution of human beings. We discussed this, yes, and you yes. really didn't. And you, you said you just rely on what the scientists tell you because you didn't have any way to verify that what they were doing. You're accepting their testimony. Now, their testimony is generally is Darwin Darwinian evolution, as Brother Hamza mentioned to you. You say you're not a Darwinist, and then we give you an. No, no, we are, ask you. We ask you. Other mechanisms I understand. I understand. So. Just hear the conversation. The vast majority of the consensus of of the evolutionists is Darwinian. Okay, that's the one that they. There's a dogma within science about this. Now, you're saying that you don't accept that, so you're going against the, the scientific if consensus, if you want to call it that, in this case. Because so I had a good argument. Now, now you're being, no, no, now you're being, uh, you're saying that you have some things, because you've watched a YouTube video by somebody that that somehow convinces you, but you're still asking questions about homology and other other things that don't make sense. So I think, I'll be honest with you, I think you're sort of, uh, I, don't, I don't see this as going anywhere reasonable, and you don't seem to be making any positive arguments. Yeah, guys, I think we need to uh, agnostic. We we, uh, we thank you for coming on because, but it has been nearly an hour, and I think I, I feel the conversation is not really going anywhere. But one one last thing that I would suggest to you, agnostic, is that th there are good reasons why we believe that the Quran is a divine revelation and a miracle of Allah, and so evolution or no evolution doesn't change that. There are good reasons and uh, evidence to believe that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was indeed the prophet of Allah. And that does not affect whether Dar Darwinian evolution, uh, evolution through, uh, you know, um, natural selection through random mutation, whatever you want, whatever theory you want to purport, purport, doesn't change the fact that the Prophet Sallallahu is indeed the Prophet of Allah. And there's a lot of evidence, I believe, very weighty evidence to accept that as well. So my advice to you really would be to where you have surety that this Quran is from Allah, the, 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 the Prophet Muhammad is indeed the messenger of Allah. Stick with that. Many of the unknowns, you can be agnostic about those things. That look at Allah knows best. I don't know how it really works. The scientists are saying this, but I'm not a scientist. I can't actually decipher their arguments anyway. I'd have to do it on trust. But here Allah is telling me, however it happened, it was a supernatural creation of Adam. How that fits in, maybe I don't know. Maybe I don't understand. But what I do know, what I do understand is that the Quran is indeed from Allah and the Prophet ﷺ is indeed his prophet. And at least that I know, so that I will stick with. That, that's, that would be my advice to you. And don't go into shak shuba on matters that are unknown or where Allah has perhaps kept some things that are clear and some things that perhaps are hidden. Don't go into those areas uh, because those areas, yes, they will cause you doubt if you ponder too much on those areas, especially when we don't have the tools necessary to be able to truly uh, do this subject justice through a, a, a very, I would say, many years of, of scientific and, and, and theological training and understanding. And we wouldn't be able to do the subject, uh, you know, I believe, justice. So does that make, does that, does that make sense to you, uh, Agnostic? Hello, agnostic. There is, uh, uh, you are uh, uh, right from your perspective, how you uh, view the world. But I'm not a relativist that will say that you are right also and I'm right also. Yeah. Because... Right, agnostic, it was great to have you on. Um, thank you very okay, much okay. for coming. You're welcome to come back again. My last question would be the same. Uh, that agnostic, I we've been at this for explain... now nearly an hour. And so I think that that is really more time than perhaps the subject really even deserved. And there's a lot of guests waiting. We have a full house. So uh, we yes, all do respect. I want to thank you. Thank all the guys here that have given me so much time. You're welcome. And we have a we have a, a stream that I did with Abu Alia. It's over two episodes. It's about evolution and how the theology marries up to the, to the science. Sheikh Abu Alia himself, I think, has studied physics or whatever at Cambridge. So he's quite scientifically uh, well versed and well read as well, and he comes and he and he explains the theological aspects uh, coupled with the scientific aspects. And what you. if you're interested, I'd, I'd I'd watch that stream. It's two part. I think it is two parts uh, on EF Dower. Uh, have a nice evening. 
lovely okay uh so guys uh any suggestions who we should have on next uh sam's had his camera on for a while finding the truth but, uh, uh, sam's useless driller's useless yeah um we got pastor jason burns the angry pastor he might be interesting uh okay uh jason can you just put your camera on for a second and then we can just identify you and then we can just want to uh, say salam to uh, brother Ijar. salam looking for a long oh, time yeah, sorry brother you, Ijar. You salam are, you Walaikum well, assalam, guys. It's a pleasure to be back with all of you. Yes, my brother. It's been rather a long time since we've seen you. Uh, it does. Um, anything you wanted to add? Or... All right, that's great, Jason. Jason, if you switch your camera off now, because I know that oh, your that awful lag, it? internet tends to be quite quite a struggle. Uh, it does. Did you want to add anything at all to that very quickly? Or no, lovely. All right, well, let's get let's get Jason on. It does. Uh, I'd like you and Nazam to have a bit of a, a say. So I'll start you off, uh, Ijaz, with the. Uh, Pastor Stevens, because I know you, you really do like him very much. Pastor Stevens, uh, sorry, I beg your pardon. Jason Burns, I beg your pardon. Welcome to the stream. Sorry, I'm, I'm introducing the wrong guest there. Hello. Hello. God Hi, bless you, Jason. folks. How are you? I'm Hello. fine, thank you. Are you all okay? We're doing absolutely wonderfully well. Are you still in Africa, uh, uh, Jason? Uh, Jason? Uh, yeah, yeah, still in Ghana. Still in Ghana. So what do you what gem of an argument do you have for us today then? Well, I, I the question is uh, the comparison between Islam and Christianity on the sovereignty of God. When okay. you became a Muslim, did you choose God or did God choose you? That's the question. Uh, in Christianity. Uh, a passage, uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, it says, Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself. So Paul is saying there that before the foundation of the world, we were chosen, uh, we were predestined. So I just, the question is, did you choose God? Or does God choose you in okay, Islam? Good question, good question, Jason. So I'd like to get Nazam. Do you want to come in there first, or, or Brother Ajaz? Nazam, you come in there first. Come uh, on. Okay, yeah, sure. I, um, I won't take too long to answer it because it's quite a deep philosophy. You, you take as long as you want, Nazam. Oh, you hardly okay. say a thing. Uh, well, I just say like from um, like like Muslims believe that God has created us, so we start out without original sin. So God's created us with this natural disposition where he's created us to be in his mercy. And then it's up to us whether we choose to remain in that path or not. So when someone, you know, comes to Islam, um, it, it, they're like returning back to that natural fitra or that oh. disposition that God created us all. So in that sense, you know, God created us for him. But at the same time, God is not going to force us if we don't want to be in a loving relationship with God. So that will be my understanding, yeah. So, Brother Ijaz, um, okay. how would you answer? And the, and the thing is, Jason, the beautiful thing within the Islamic concept is not only that, and I think uh, Brother Nazem touched on it, but Allah creates us sinless and pure. And we our slates are empty when we're born. Our slates are clean. And in fact, Jason, even when somebody returns back to the truth, i.e., that they um, were born in their fitra and they reject God for argument's sake and then they return back to Allah because they realize that this is the right way even the sins that they have they themselves personally have done Jason even those are wiped off the slate's actually cleaned all over again so we we believe that um, as, as Nazem said, that Allah places that predisposition in all of our hearts to, to reach out and search for God and to find God. And that's why, Jason, even on a, on a crashing plane, even the atheist, at that point, when he knows death is imminent, the fitra kicks in. Yeah. And all that materialism and his cars and his houses and the women and the parties and everything, he doesn't think about those things. He, he reaches out to God. He says, oh, God, if you're out there, save me, because he realizes it at that point. And we, 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 we feel that we, we're told that the fitra is unclouded. 
And suddenly the people see the reality, they see the truth and they turn to God. So that's our concept, Jason. Okay. I, I appreciate that. I really appreciate that, that you explained that. Uh, just two, two questions uh, that, that to, to clarify, to understand is, is uh, you know, Adam and Eve, when Adam fell, uh, I, I genuinely don't fully understand the doctrine of Islam with Adam's fall. For the, for the Christian theology, the idea is when Adam fell, uh, that the human race was, was in sin and the will, the heart, the mind is in bondage to sin. So that's our view. Um, Rome, uh, um, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to, to 4 talks about we're dead in sin. And so the, so the first question there is about, can you clarify the difference between that view, what I've just explained to the Islamic view on Adam, and then on the issue of God's plan, um, Paul says we are predestined. So he's talking about a predestined plan that before the beginning of time, you know, God had this plan. So how does that work in Islam? Does God have a plan for for history, does God have a plan in Islam for the future, for his for his people, or not? So those okay, so are the two is, questions. So Jason, you've you've put two questions there. I'm going to let uh, Hamza come in there, but after Ijaz, because I haven't heard from Ijaz yet. Uh, Ijaz, come on, you're going to come in now, right? Right, come on. You've got quite a good uh, thing to say on this as well. Um, so Jason, you're basically asking two questions. One is you're claiming that in Christianity, basically, it says that Adam fell. So there's this concept of falling, right? And then, and does God have a plan for His people, a plan for creation? Yeah. Uh, Ijaz, um, do you want to come in there? Assalamu alaikum. Uh, uh, salam. No, just briefly, God is sovereign in Islam and the Quran, the first chapter. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. He's the Lord of everything in creation. So yes, He is truly sovereign. Uh, to be sovereign means that you aren't given authority, like Christ Jesus is given authority in the Bible. So Christ Jesus, in this case, the difference would be he's not sovereign, whereas Allah in Islam is. Allah cannot be given authority, he eternally has it. Secondly, in Islam, Allah does his will, but someone like in Christianity, Christ Jesus says, I do not do my own will, but the will of my Father. So God, to be sovereign, must have his own will, and he must have inherently authority, two things which Christ Jesus does not possess. Um, does God predestine who is saved and who isn't saved? Yes, this is part of Qadr, what we call taqdir, or you know, God's knowledge. God, God's knowledge encompasses everything, the past, the present, and the future, because God is atemporal. And on that basis, he knows who will be saved and who will do what is right, who will do what is wrong. And he allows us to exercise our free will to either earn our reward or earn our punishment. As Allah says in the very second chapter of the Quran, that you know some people's hearts and minds are sealed to the truth, hence they dig themselves deeper in the sins that they follow. Lastly, God in Islam is just, he's al adil He says in Surah Al-Zilzala that for every you know, evil deed that we do, we will be held accountable for it. And for every good deed that we do, we will also be held accountable for it. So these are the three points I wanted to summarize. Jazakumullah uh, it, it does. If you could just touch on the, the initial point that he's making about Adam falling and their oh, yes. yeah. inheriting. Well, yeah, in Islam, life. yeah, in Islam, God does not make mistakes. You know, Allah created the earth, and He created Adam from the earth. Uh, the plan in Islam, according to our teachings, is that Adam, alayhi salam, and his progeny were meant to settle on the earth. It wasn't a mistake. Um, if you read the Hebrew Bible, it never says that human beings are born with, with sin. This is a Christian development. It never says that anyone who's born of a woman has the sin of Adam. It also does not say this. And I do personally find it very misogynistic and quite evil personally to say that the pain that women get when they give childbirth is a curse from God. I happen to think that all life is precious and if God gives us life, then this life Life is not inherently evil. I look at a baby and I see love and kindness. I don't see a spawn of Satan as you know, you know, uh, Christianity would you know characterize that child because he has uh, Adam's sin in him. Thank you, Jason. Before I get Hamza in, do you want to respond at all?
Jason, are you there? Um, I think it possibly Thank Jason's. Yeah, sorry, did did you hear the um, the, the, um, the answers that? No, I, I found that very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. Uh, so, Jason, do you do you find those teachings? I just, I just, uh, I heard uh, bits and snippets. I it, it kept coming out a little bit. He always says that. Um, okay. So, was there anything else, Hello? Jason, or was that all there was? Could I maybe add some additional points? Um, Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, um, so, if, if Maybe you should add uh, points. Um, That's is it me or Jason. you guys? I don't know. No, no. It's, uh, I think it's your internet, Jason. It's, it's cutting out a lot. So uh, possibly... If you agree, I'm as right. Please be quiet, Jason. Thank you. Right. Uh, sorry. Just J Jason, can you... I think, Jason, you're probably struggling with the internet. Uh, Nazem, maybe you should make your point while Jason's internet. Yeah, um, so I'll just quickly make my points, and then um, Pastor Jason can watch the recording afterwards, and then hear. I, I can hear you. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, I, I was just going to say, um, in the Quran in Surah Baqarah, the second chapter, uh, verse number thirty and forward, um, God basically makes an announcement to, and says that He's going to place a place a vicegerent uh, upon the earth. Um, so it was God's like. Uh, um, original intent that um, Adam was to be a vicegerent up, upon the earth, but um, God placed Adam in the garden so as to prepare Adam for life upon the earth. Um, so from the story, uh, we learn um, a, a lesson um, of guidance, um, as well as a lesson of um, original forgiveness um, and repentance, because um, when Adam slips, um, the Quran says that God guided Adam and um, taught Adam words of repentance, and um, God f forgave um, Adam. And the Quran also tells us in chapter 7 um, that um, Satan will try to mislead you out of the garden, and uh, um, you, you know, as you try to you know, seduce your, your parents. Um, so the Quran goes on to say that um, from time to time, God will send his guidance uh, to people, and um, you know those people who wish to be guided, um, Satan will not be able to lead them astray. Words to that effect. Um, so, so really, it's up to us. So, so God's given us a choice whether we want to uh, re remain in that guidance that God originally made us to be, um, or whether we want to um, follow in the footsteps of Satan. And the Quran warns us against um, following in the footsteps of Satan. Uh, because uh, Satan simply desires to create like enmity and jealousy amongst people, uh, whereas God's inviting us towards his mercy and forgiveness. Uh, Jason, okay. are you still there? Uh, hello? Hi there, Jason. Can did, you hear did me? You, um, yeah, we can hear you now. Uh, did you, yeah, did you hear yeah. Now? can you hear me? We can hear you, yes. Yeah, I got, I got all that. I got everything. I, I got everything, and uh, it was very, very instructive and very helpful. So, it uh, just a comparison, uh, just for a debate or a discussion, is taking all what you said uh, in John fifteen verse sixteen. Jesus says, "You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you." It says, "You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you." that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he gives it to you. And then in John 10, 20, he says, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. The question that I have for a debate or a discussion is if, I've, if, if the view that I'm expounding from the Bible, that God chose us, that God has a plan and he chose us, then that means that he will keep us to the very end. So in Islam, if you've chosen God, then how do you know that you're going to get to the end? How do you know that you're going to get to paradise if it's based on your strength, on your ability? Or is it not? Is it when you choose Islam, then God helps you? 
Jason, Jason, what are you talking about? You asked the question at the beginning, do you choose God or does God choose you? Nobody answered that question. Now you're acting like we said, oh, yeah, God chooses us. Or we choose God. Nobody answered that question that way. And why? And you're acting like you've never heard this before. No, you I'm didn't not... know what the Muslim position. Look, Jason, we all know you know the Muslim position on Adam in the garden and all of this, and and where we the way we view sin and things like this. You know, acting like you don't know. Anyway, my perspective. Sorry, my two penneth. Um, we don't believe as Muslims that sin entered the world in the garden. We believe repentance entered the world in the garden. First thing we believe Christianity is a has been created to solve a problem that doesn't exist. I don't know why you keep quoting Ephesians like it's some kind of reliable source of information. Why are you quoting John like you know what Jesus said and then building theology based upon these things? I don't understand it. Why are you saying it with such authority that it's true? I, I don't I don't get it. Where are you getting this confidence in 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 reading this but book? What, what, I'm trying is, what I'm trying to what, what what I'm trying to what I'm trying to do is just is just to show you that. But what, from what I'm trying to do is, yeah, I know about Islam, but I didn't know to I didn't have the clarity that you've just given me. You've given me clarity in some of the things that you've said. I've I've read and studied, but it's different reading and studying and hearing it from Muslims themselves. So you have Jason, clarified Jason, things for me in a very nice quoting, way and a very friendly way. Why do you keep way. quoting the Gospel of John like it's a reliable source of information? Why do you keep doing that? Because, because the the thing is, is whether whether you agree with it or not, from my position. The Quran to me isn't the word of God. The Bible is the word of the God. Quran. So that's my authority. You, I'm asking you why you believe no, but that, the, the Gospels are a reliable source of information. But that, that's equivocation. It's equivocation. We're on about the predestination of mankind. No, no. And you've moved the topic. I'm you, and I, I, I'm trying to get to the point. I, yes, I'm, look, Jason, Jay, you're Jason, equivocating. Jason, you're equivocating. No, We're on equivocating. predestination. I'm not equivocating. You keep quoting from the Gospel of John and trying to hold us to it. You keep quoting from... You were equivocating. You were equivocating, second, brother, my friend. Right. So I want to know, where does your confidence come that when you read the Gospel of John, this, this is what was said? Where you, where you get this confidence from? Why do you believe it's reliable? I understand what you're saying. And to me, as you well, know, question, I then. believe it's the word of God. And what I'm Why? saying to you, you don't, but, but, but let me, let me just finish. You don't, you don't have to, I don't accept the Quran, but I can listen to what you teach about predestination about or man choosing God. I can listen Look, to that and I can compare that. But wait a minute. I can compare that view Jason, with, with, with the Christian Jason, view. And I Jason, see inconsistency. I see, wait a minute, wait a minute. I see, let, let me finish. I see inconsistency when you say man has free will. Because how do you know right. you'll get to the end? If God Jason, has chosen you, he, he will keep you because he has a plan. That's Jason, the point. Are you a pastor? Are you a pastor? And you're not engaging. I am engaging. Yes, I am. You're not You're not engaging. The engaging these this. other guys. No, these other guys have engaged. No, these guys have engaged in a beautiful way. They've been really yeah, good. Jay, Jason, you need to engage Jason, with the topic of Jay, predestination. Jason you, have to let Hamza, Jason, you have to let Hamza speak, though, because he is allowing you to speak. And whenever he's starting... You're not actually allowing it, and that's being a little bit unfair. Let him let him make his point. You've had plenty of opportunity to make your point. Let him at least make a 30-second, 45, 50 second, a minute point before you just immediately jump in. So Hamza, so go ahead. Yeah. So Jason immediately jumped to Ephesians, immediately jumped to the sorry, read from the Gospel of John and, and John and as if this is some kind of authority. I'm just trying to understand why he believes. What he's reading is reliable. What he's reading is what Jesus said. Why does he believe that? I believe it because God has said it. That's why I believe it. What, what does that mean? God has said it in his word. God has built with that. The highest, the highest testimony in knowledge is not science. It's not your emotions. It's not even logic. The highest testimony is God. That is the highest testimony. God is sovereign and great. And so if God gives his word, he will bear witness to his word. And as I read right. these words, they bear witness to me that they are the word of God. Wait a minute. When I read the Quran, it doesn't bear witness to me. 
It doesn't speak to me in any way. And I see inconsistencies in the Quran. I do not see any inconsistencies in the Bible. And so I've, I've studied the Bible. I've read it for 30 years. I've read the Quran for 15 years. And I see the Bible as the pure word of God. And it teaches predestination. And I just wanted to know what the Islamic view was. And these guys have done a good job in explaining to me. Right. So again, I ask you, why do you believe your Bible is the word of God? I've just explained to you in the theory of epistemology. I've just explained to you in the theory of epistemology. Well, what do you mean? What do you mean? If what, you want what? to go into the enlightenment with Immanuel Kant. No, no, let's go. Let's go into because, the gospels. Why because do you, why do you believe the gospels? You have to. You, no, 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 you're not, no. No, 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 no. You asked me a specific question. Why do I believe the Bible is the word of God? Why do I believe they're the authority? And I'm explaining to you. I can go into the history of epistemology and give you a theory of knowledge why I believe the Bible is the word of God. And what I'm telling you is the oh, highest man. testimony of knowledge is oh, not man. man. Wait a minute. Yeah, the wait, highest wait, testimony wait. of knowledge, wait a minute, is not man. But but wait a minute. It is God. And so therefore, you, you've God that. has bore witness now. When I, when, wait, wait, wait a minute. Yeah, but, but then when I go into the historical inquiry of the Quran, it does not stand up to scrutiny what the, the Bible the does. We're not talking about the Quran. The Quran's got nothing to do no, with why you, you believe the Bible's reliable. It it does. It does. Because no, it doesn't. in order to know no, the Bible's doesn't. reliable. No, wait the a minute. Quran it does. It does. A, it the, does. Quran, the Quran has nothing to do with why you believe the Bible's reliable. Nothing. Of course, of course it does. You, let why me explain. It? Because on, because when I read the Quran, when I read the Book of Mormon, when I read other religious books. There is no testimony from God about those books. And secondly, they are inconsistent historically and other aspects to it. But when oh, I read oh, the okay. Bible, there is, uh, God, wait a minute, God speaks to me through it. And no, secondly, I'm, I'm it is historically and it's testimony second, is correct. I'm, just I'm just muting you a second. I'm just muting you a second. Why can't I mute him? Right. Listen, I'm asking you. A very direct question as to why you believe the Bible's reliable source of information. I don't. I get. I ask this question to many, many Christians, and nobody can explain it to me. Now you telling me why you don't accept the Quran is reliable and you don't accept the Book of Mormon is reliable doesn't answer the question I'm asking you. Yeah, I'm asking you a very straightforward, simple question. You you claim that the Bible's reliable. It's inconsistent. Just explain it to us. I'm trying to explain to you. I'll, I'll read one passage of scripture and I'll read you the Westminster Confession. In the Westminster Confession, it gives you a beautiful statement of why the Bible is the word of God. Okay. I'll just get the, the Westminster Confession. What's the Westminster Confession? Here's the Westminster Confession, chapter it's our statement of faith. You, 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 okay? I'm not asking what your belief is. I the know West what your Mr. belief Confession. is. Why, if you want to know our... Why? Why the belief? Not what the belief. Yeah, but it explains to you. It explains to you. Listen. Section four. The authority of the Holy Scriptures for which it ought to be believed and obeyed dependeth... Listen. Not upon the testimony of any man or church, wholly upon God, who is truth itself, the author thereof, and therefore it is to be received because it is the word of God. Section five, we may be moved and induced by testimony of the church to a high and reverent esteem of Holy Scripture and the heaviness of the matter, the efficacy of the doctrine, the majesty of the style, the content of all the parts and the scope of the whole, which is to give all glory to God. The full discovery of it makes of the only way of man's salvation, the many incomparable excellencies and the entire perfection thereof are arguments whereby it does abundantly evidence itself to be the word of God. Now, listen, listen, yet withstanding our full persuasion and assurance of the infallible truth and the divine authority thereof is from an inward work of the Holy Spirit bearing witness and with the word in our hearts. So the Holy Spirit, God, bears witness to us that it is the word. And then 
We look at the evidence and the evidence backs up the witness, but it's God first. God is the first testimony, not man. Hamza, do you want to have another go or do you want Imran to jump in there? And I don't have that testimony when I read the Quran, but I have the testimony when I read the Bible. All right. I I Imran, do you want to jump in there for a bit? So what you seem to be saying is that you, you believe because the Holy Spirit is inside you. Jason, can you get the Holy Spirit? No. Make your internet. It's more, it's more sophisticated than that. Because that's, you that's haven't, what you, you see, one you have second, an object, you have an object. One second, wait, wait a minute. Uh, let me just, let me just finish. Let, let so, me finish. What you said let, was, let me finish, second, let me finish. That, Pastor Burns, one second, I'm just trying to say something. I could read a book. Pastor Burns, one second, please. Listen to what I'm saying to you. What you've done, what you've read out, this uh, this Westminster Confession, you said that really, what this is like a circular argument you're making. So you said section uh, four was the authority of the Holy Scripture, which ought to be believed and obeyed upon, depends not upon the authority of uh, a testimony of any man or church, but upon God himself, because it I'm is listening. the word of God, it's... because it is the word of God. Now, that is saying that you believe the book is the word of God because it is the word of God. It's a non-statement. The next section five, we are moved and induced by the testimony of the church to a high and reverent esteem of the Holy Scripture and the heaviness of matter and the efficacy of drocracine and majesty of style and the consent of all the parts, etc., etc., etc. And then it says, notwithstanding our full preservation and assurance of the infallible truth and defined authority thereof is from the inward work of the Holy Spirit, bearing witness by and with the word in our hearts. So it's saying it's so what it's what you're saying to all you're saying in this Westminster statement that you believe is we believe this book is from God and you you will believe it as well because of the Holy Spirit being inside you. Now, what you're saying to us is that you you believe because you believe it's a, it's a tautology. It makes no it's a circular argument. There's nothing that you've given. Now, what Hamza's asking for you, you for is. For us who are not believers and don't believe this just because we believe this, you know, that's not a reason to believe something. We're asking for, is there a reason you can give without pointing to, I have a spirit inside me of the text, something that is empirical, verifiable that we can use to say, yep, yeah, this is a reliable source of information. That's the question that Hamza is asking you. And I'd appreciate it if you'd answer him, actually. But there's an issue of objectivity within that statement. You're missing the objectivity of... Where's the objectivity? Yeah, you tell me. But all but all knowledge is circular. No, it's not. That's the problem. <laughs> Thank you very much for saying that. I appreciate that. That's your position, and really, I think we wish you all the best, Mr. Bur Pastor Burns. The, but all knowledge is circular. If you look at if you look at epistemology or the theory of knowledge. Can I ask a question to you, Brother Ajaz? Uh, do you believe everything is all knowledge that you have circular what he's referring to is Agrippa's trilemma so he's misunderstanding it, it, I, I can I, I caught little yeah, bits of yeah. you can you hear me can we mute him just for one minute so we just send him on his way now we don't need him anymore J just j just to be clear there are axiomatic statements which ground our reality um, not all knowledge is circular. Knowledge has to come from something. It doesn't have to entail itself. Basically, he said, my scripture is true because I believe in it and I have the spirit and God says it's true. This is the definition of circular reasoning. He does not start from the basis where he has to prove or qualify that this is actually God speaking. So you can't actually engage in a conversation with Jason. He can't change his mind because he doesn't have a reasonable way to think about scripture. For ordinary people, we ask a question, if you bring me this belief, why is this belief true? For Jason, if you bring him a belief, he presupposes that it is true and everything else is wrong around it. We as Muslims, Allah gave us aql, he gave us reasoning, and he gave us knuckle revelation. He did not only give us one or the other, he gave us both. I believe that our Creator gave us a brain to think about things, not to presuppose that certain things are true. 
And basically, he's arguing with the evangelical doctrine of once saved, always saved. If you believe in Christ Jesus and you accept him as Lord and Savior, you can never become a disbeliever. And if you do become a disbeliever and convert that seed to the true religion of Islam, um, then you were never a believer to begin with, which is the no true Scotsman fallacy. Jason isn't here to have a conversation because Jason cannot qualify that the Bible is the word of God. He must presuppose in every argument that it is. Hence, when he says the Bible has no inconsistencies or contradictions, but in the Bible, Paul writes in Titus chapter 3, verse 9, that you should not get into foolish controversies about genealogies. The author of Matthew didn't get that memo and begins his gospel with a genealogy. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, the author didn't get that memo either. Holy Spirit inspired him to put a genealogy. And those two contradicting genealogies caused disputation among Christians for centuries, even to this very day. So when I open the Bible from cover to cover, I don't get the feeling that God inspired this. Rather, I clearly see it from man, and there's a simple evidence for this. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Between the Bible and the Quran, the Bible is the book to call Satan the God of this world. According to the Quran, there is no God other than Allah. And I sincerely believe that Jason understands and knows this. But because he has to get money for mission, being a missionary in Africa to rob the poor African people of their dignity and wealth, he has to pretend that his white savior complex will compensate for his irrational thinking at some point in his pathetic, useless life. Thank you. Um, could, could I maybe uh, just very quickly um, just make some few points as well? Yeah, Nazem, um, I think I think I think Nazem, you need to come in and put some bandages on. I think after that, please. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So, um, I, I basically agree with what Brother um, Ijaz was saying. Um, th there's something known in um, apologetics as presuppositionist apologetics, uh, which people like uh, Pastor Jason, with respect, and also uh, Dr. James White uh, follow. Um, but basically, it doesn't uh, match or uh, tally with what the Bible teaches because uh, with regards to the testimony of the Holy Spirit um, uh, in one's life, uh, Paul himself doubted uh, whether he had the Holy Spirit in him because in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 7, verse 40, Paul says, I think I have the Holy Spirit. Uh, in, in other words, Paul's not sure whether he's writing the word of God or not. Um, the, the, the other points I just wanted to very quickly respond to uh, was the point that uh, Pastor Stephen said, um, like, how do we know that we're saved? Sorry, um, it's, it's Jason, it's Jason Burns. Nazem, it's Jason Burns. I, I kept saying Pastor oh, sorry, Stephen. Jason, yeah. I, yeah, that, was my, that was my fault. Uh, that was my fault. Sorry. So, 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 yeah, yeah uh, Pastor Jason, I, I don't feel that your position um, actually uh, solves w what you see as a problem, uh, because even in the doctrine of the elect, um, you still don't know who the elect are. Ultimately, you're going to only find out who the true elect are uh, after you die, and that's when you know whether you were of the elect or not. A and second, um, if you believe that God loves everyone, then why does God only save a, a few like, why doesn't he save everyone and not just choose a particular, uh, you know, a number of people to be saved? Um, so so um, this, like, contradicts the view that God loves everyone, because then if he loved everyone, then he would save everyone. Uh, whereas the Muslim position is that God does love everyone, but at the same time, he's given us free will. So he's not going to force us uh, or, or make us to to love him, but we have a choice whether we want to love him, and and that and that's a more valuable relationship where a person isn't forced to love someone, but that they're, they're in that relationship because they want to be, um, not because they're being forced. And um, yeah, those were just the points. Yeah, I, I think to make. Uh, he seemed to be point. channeling Calvinism, if I'm not wrong, uh, the way he was preaching this Westminster Confession, the idea that you can only be a Christian if God chooses to be a Christian. And if, you, if you're not chosen to be a Christian, then you're going to hell. And he's like, well, what happens to the mercy and the justice? Yeah. And, and I think yeah, that, according yeah. to Calvinists, you don't have a choice, isn't it? Like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, either yeah. God decides for you, basically. You can only, yeah, that's why I said to when uh, James White had that debate with Zaki, and he says, I pray for you. And I asked him, why are you praying for him? Because you, you you know that's gonna like have no effect. It's already been decided. It's already been decreed. Yeah. And he goes, Well, I was just saying that, you know, just because <laughs> it's just like yeah. do you really believe it? Honestly, do you really believe that thing that you've been chosen and that's it, and no one can <sighs> and, and can you imagine if Muslims were to make the same argument 
why do you believe the Quran is true? Why do you believe uh, that Allah is the, the the God of Abraham? Why do you believe that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the Prophet of God? Well, because I believe that the Quran is from God and it tells me so, that's why I accept it. No, I mean, worse than that, because I don't believe the Bible is the word of God. Yeah. That's I what mean, he's basically doing. You know. Oh, yeah, I didn't believe the Bible was reliable, so the Quran is. Yeah. And, and the, the other thing is that everybody claims, like you mentioned as well before, Hamza, and I think um, uh, Ijaz just mentioned it there as well. All Christians claim that they're inspired by the Holy Ghost, and yet they hold completely contradictory positions on many things. So, I mean, you know, really, I mean, this is not really a, a, a logical or a rational way of arguing. And I think if, if you simply say you believe it because you believe it's from God, but you're not prepared to qualify that as to why you believe it's from God, then, of course, it's a circular argument and it leads to nowhere, to be honest. Uh, Imran, do you want to add anything before we get the next um, guest on? No, I think much of a brother, Jods, and that's okay. an, uh, an uh, L J um, Barrier, we're going to get you on next. You can leave your camera on or you can switch it on or off, whichever you prefer. Can you just give me a quick wave, uh, L J L L I J Lidge? Can you hear me, Lidge? Lidge Barrier? Can you give me a quick wave? Take Same. your hand off your mouth. There we go. That'll do. That's as good as a wave. Okay. All right. Well, let's get him on then. <laughs> Hi there. Welcome to the stream. Can you hear us? Uh, your sound isn't coming through, so maybe you need to just unmute yourself. We still can't hear you. We can't still can't, can't hear you. Maybe you haven't selected your microphone correctly. So you just need to go to the little cam mic symbol at the bottom. And um, then on that, make sure you've selected your mic because that might be the problem. Uh, while you're sorting that out, we'll uh, try to get the next guest on. Uh, I think um, so. We've, I think the next two are either we've got Sam UK, who's just going to talk about Hadith again, which is uh, a bit. Uh, Mark, can you hear me? Ah, now we can hear you. Great. Okay. Ah, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, how are you, brother? Those. Where are you? Where are you uh, contacting us from today? All right. Okay. I'm from Ethiopia. Oh, Ethiopia. Lovely. And uh, can I ask you what religion you are? Oh my! I don't have religion now. Okay. I was Christian. Okay. But you know, thanks to Professor Barton. Do you know him? I, I know we we we, so, we know about him and yes. So, I, I read his uh, books, you know, especially about the reliability of gospels, you know. So after that, I left Christianity, you know. Okay. I watch uh, his you know videos on YouTube, you know. He has many debates with uh, Christians. Yeah. So after that, I I left Christianity. That's my that was my my history, you know. Lovely. I accept. So, Islam, all Islam teaching except Qadr wal Qadr, you know. I have a question on my mind on that area. So, can you clear, clarify it? So, so you, is it? Sorry, did any of your brothers catch that? Is it of the Qadr aspect of the brother said? Is that what he said? Yes, yes. Uh, so, That's my uh, question. destiny. All right. So, uh, we haven't heard from Imran so we'll, uh, for a while. Uh, Doctor Imran, do you want to address that question, Inshallah? Uh, sure. What is the question, actually, brother? My question is, you know, if God knows your predestination, you know, what is the main purpose, you know, to punish you, you know? So I just trying to understand, I'm just trying to understand what you're saying. You're saying if God knows what you are going to do, what's the purpose? What of is the main purpose to send prophets for you, you know? He knows, he will not accept that, you know? So what is the main purpose, you know? If let, let me give you one example, you know. If my teacher knows that I will get ten out of ten, I will get ten out of ten, you know. If he already knows, what is the main purpose of giving quiz for me, you know? Okay, if you were doing a quiz, let's just take, use your example, yes? You're doing a yes. quiz and your maths teacher knows you very well. He's been teaching you for a long time and he knows exactly what you're going to do. 
yeah. and there's a big paper coming up. It's a very important paper. You can, it can make or break your your future. Okay. And what the teacher says to you is, uh, sorry, how do you say your name? How do you say your name? Bari. Bari. Bari, yeah. So he says to you, Bari, don't worry. Don't sit the exam. I'm going to give you a C plus. Are you happy with this? I'm not happy with that. Okay. Why are you not happy with this, my brother? Because it may not uh, be fair, you know, because of. Okay. I mean, get A plus. And this is the reason why you are allowed to sit the test. You understand? But you because answer not, to me in, not... in, in human's perspective. But in God's yeah. perspective, no, no, he, no. I'm, he, just, no, he no knows. I'm telling you. One second, you're, right. you're, you're, you're trying to mix the two. So the first thing for you is, as a, as a person who has the ability to make choices and, you know, you're, you're living life, you make choices between right and wrong all the time. If you were to be punished or given... Uh, a reward for something you haven't done you will say why why am i being given this it's not fair i could have done better or maybe i wouldn't have done as bad do you understand that's your but this is this is the justness of the scenario that you have to sit the exam to receive the punishment or to receive the reward in a just way that's your perspective okay now i'm going to switch just change it a little bit because your math teacher knew what you were going to in there they knew what you were going to do yeah, and you and you sat the paper and you got whatever you and you still got C plus. Did they make you get the C plus? Because they knew. No, no, they didn't. So foreknowledge, because God is all knowing, is not the same as forcing you to do something. They're two different things. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Does that help you with your question? Still, it is not clear for me. You know. What's not what's unclear now? He knows your destination, you know, he knows. Yeah. If he knows why he punished you, he knows already, you know. Before so you that, that part we answered because we said it's not just to not let you sit the test and then punish you. Do you understand? So it to punish you without so say if say if there's a person A who will go to hell, God knows this. He t whatever test he gives him, this person is going to go to hell. If that person doesn't do anything and God says, okay, I've created you, I'm going to put you straight in the hell, this is unjust. Why is it unjust? The person can say, I didn't do anything. Yes. Mm -hmm. You didn't even give me a chance. I didn't do anything. Do you understand? Yes. And God is the just. So you have to sit the test. You have to sit the test for you to be... Just, just, justly rewarded or punished for it. Okay, that's the first thing. This is why, this is why you're given the test. Now, it doesn't mean that, uh, it, and that makes it a just thing. If if God were to put you in the hell uh, for something uh, that you haven't even done, then this would be unjust. Okay, that's the first. That so this bit bit is answered. This is why you have to do the test. So, what's the second part? This is the only one. I don't have any question. You know, on Islam. You know. All teachings yeah. are, I accept all teachings, you know, except this one. So a little bit, it is clear for me. I will can try to make it. Can I ask you a question, brother? I you don't have a question, you know. Thank you, you very you, much. You believe, you believe Allah is the only one worthy of worship? Yes. Yes, I and believe. You, and you believe that the Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah? I believe. And you believe that Jesus is the messenger of Allah? Even the, yes, I believe even the Bible says. So, okay. why should so, I believe? So, brother, you're a, you're a Muslim. You can't call me Muslim, but you know, wait, so sometimes I just I have doubt, you know, on Qadr or Qadr, you know. No Some problem. Doubt. These these questions uh, have been have discussed for thousands of years. the The thing that makes that would make you That's understand that to be a Muslim is that you believe and that, that Allah is the only one worthy of worship. Yes. And that you believe that the, the messenger of Allah, Prophet Wasallam, is the messenger of Allah. Of these course. two things are the entrance to Islam. Okay? You hold these beliefs already. Yes. Is that true? Yes. Then you're That's already true. there, brother. What's up? What's, uh, why are you not taking the step? Would you like to take the Shahada now? No, no, no. I, I just... Uh, I'll... All you would be doing is saying what you already told me. 
You've already told me, I believe that there is nothing worthy of worship except for Allah. And you've told me you, the, you believe the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of Allah. You've already said this. This so, is the Shahada. Yes, but you know, Qadawul Qadir also, the main point, you know, if you don't believe in that area, can you be Muslim? But what, so you, what is it about, you, what is it about you, Qatar you're not getting? You believe, you said you accepted what we said. What is he not getting? Do you, do you think that by knowing the outcome, you you determine the outcome? Is that your belief? Yes. Okay, who won the Africa Cup of Nations? Oh, uh, okay. all right. Senegal. Say it loud. Senegal, right? So Senegal won the Africa Cup of Nations. God knew, because right. he's all-knowing, that Senegal would win the Africa Cup of Nations, yeah? Did God make them win the Africa Cup of Nations? I don't think so. Right, but he knew they were going to win it, but he didn't cause them to win it. What caused them to win it? Their experience, you know, their ability, I think. Their ability, their actions, their determination. So just because God knew the outcome of the, the winners of the tournament was going to be Senegal, where everybody thought it was going to be Cameroon, but it was Senegal, yeah? So if you looked at the odds prior to the competition starting, Cameroon were the hosts, they were the favourites, everybody thought they were going to win. But Senegal won, and God knew they were going to win. But it wasn't based upon anything he did. He just knew, this is the point of knowing the outcome of something, but not determining the outcome of something. Now, to extrapolate that, God knows what you, Bare, are going to do in your life. So imagine you now, uh, you are effectively the Africa Cup of Nations. And then God knows through your abilities, your determinations, your choices you're going to make, the moves you're going to make up to the day you die, will determine whether you win the cup or not. And just as the uh, Senegal won the Africa Cup of Nations without God's interference, do you understand? Yeah. Yes. You, 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 so are also you two are also the master of your own destiny. Okay. Now, do you know what you need to do to become a Muslim? Do you know what you need to believe to be a Muslim? Yes. Because the doctor just asked you, "What is it?" First thing is to believe what Allah is the only one worthy of worship. I believe but you believe that, that yes? Yes. Oh. Do you really believe God that? Is one, you just you know. God is yes. one. God is huh? one, you know. I believe in that area. God no, is no, one. No, I, I didn't say that. that. I didn't say he's one. I said he's the only one worthy of worship. Yes. He's the only one praise, the one you want to take guidance from. The one who created us. Do you truly believe it or are you just saying yeah just for the sake of it? I truly believe that. Okay, alhamdulillah. Do you truly believe Muhammad, peace and blessings upon him, is a messenger of God? I believe him. Why? Because, you know, it, from the Quran, you know, it, it, Quran doesn't have, you know, contradiction in it, in it, you know. That's my, you know, that's my, okay, the reason, you know, to believe him. All I right. respect him. I believe he, him is the messenger of God, you know. Right. So you believe that Muhammad is a messenger of God. You believe that God is the only one worthy of worship. Then why don't you bear witness to that? That's all you need to be to become a Muslim. And everything else and all of your questions will get answered for the rest of your life. Okay. You're not going to get all the answers before you become a Muslim. But these are the things you need to believe to be a Muslim. This is what differentiates you. Because you'd be a, you'd be a fool. I'm telling you now, Barry, you'd be a fool to believe that God is the only one worthy of worship. God is the supreme source of guidance and morality. And you've got a messenger who's come and said, this is how you connect to that guidance and morality. And you ignore it for what? 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 what, what? <laughs> if you truly believe it, bear witness to it. I will accept Islam, you know, in the future. Let's do it then. Brother so Barry, how, you, how do you know that you're going to have time? No, he's going to take a sh He's going to do it now. We, we don't know if yeah, I'm, right. I don't know right. if I'm going to be here. I don't know what will happen tomorrow, but you know. So let's yeah. do it now, then, yeah? Let's take no, a shot harder, man, no. and get on with your Sorry, life. I'm not ready. I will, I will, I will, I will be ready in the, in the future, you know? But for now, I'm not ready. Thank you very much. You brother, 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 Barry, eh? 
brother Barry, um, you, uh, you know, the thing here is this, my brother, um, not understanding some concept fully does not affect the, your core beliefs that you believe in one and only creator and you believe in the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and you believe all of the prophets. It doesn't change that, you see. The point here is that there will be lots of things. This whole thing about Qadr, Imran has already alluded to, has been discussed for hundreds and hundreds of years. Okay? But in Islam, in the Quran, Allah says that this is there are things that are seen and there are things that are unseen. Yes. And to truly believe, you have to believe in the seen and you have to believe in the unseen. So there are things yes. that, you know, uh, if you ask me the question, do I fully understand the whole concept of Qadr? I would say to you, no, I don't understand it fully. But if, but however, if you said to me, however that mechanism works, is it completely just, 100% just? And I would say, yes, it is just. So this is where your belief in trust in Allah is that Allah, whatever this qadr, however it works, however it marries up, whatever the formula is, it's under this concept of pure justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? So all we're telling you to do, Brother Hamza is telling you to do, the Brother Imran is telling you to do, is saying, look, Qadr is something that people have been discussing for centuries. Some people, like myself, I don't fully comprehend how all of this Qadr works, brother. But what I do know is that Allah says that Allah will treat every soul with justice. Not one seed, you know, one seed, one atom, whatever you want to do, you know, the smallest deed of good or bad will be unaccounted for. Everything will be accounted for. And everybody will be treated justly and nobody will complain on the day of judgment that I, have, I was treated unjustly. In fact, even the one who's being punished, on that day he will know that he was treated fairly, he was treated justly. So this is a wonderful opportunity for you, brother. To, to do your shahada, start your journey And you can start it slowly You don't have to suddenly do everything in one day You know, you have to start Learn as much as you can And you practice as much as you can But, but don't lose this golden opportunity Because shaitan Is to make procrastination To slow you down To prevent you from giving the shahada This is what shaitan does So Thank you. Our advice to you as a brother Is that if you truly believe, because we're not forcing you to say anything you don't already believe. In your heart, you already accept this, right? So all, we, all we're saying to you, brother, is that if you truly already accept it, you truly already believe it, then just give the testimony with your tongue as well. No, I'm not ready for today, you know? Okay. That's my so No problem. Thank you. Thank Please. You. I respect you guys. No problem. Brother, Would email you, us. Just tell us one thing before you go, Barry. The reason you're not accepting Islam has got nothing to do with Qadr. I don't have we reason, don't but you know, I'm not ready for today, no? No, 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 that's, but that's not the reason you're not accepting Don't, don't force Islam. me, you know? No, I know, no. I'm not forcing you. I'm just saying to you, that's not the reason you're not accepting Islam. That's just... I will accept, you know, I said I will accept in the future, you know? I'm not right. ready for today. No, no problem, brother. No, there's, no, no, brother. there's no forcing, there's no compulsion. Well, I just will do give one you thing to me, Barry. Name. Barry, I'll just give do you one my thing email address, you know. One sec, Barry, just do one thing today, yeah. Tomorrow. Then I will tell you, you know. No, Barry, Barry, just listen, just listen, just listen. It's a simple one. That's the easy one. Okay. Tomorrow, just open up a newspaper. Yeah, your local newspaper, and see how many people died that day. Yeah, who thought yes. they had time? Who thought they were going to get a chance to do this and do that? read this and read that and they didn't because why because the prophet muhammad peace and peace told us when you wake up don't expect to go to sleep when you go to sleep don't expect to wake up live every day as if it's your last because it could be and, and understand something barry yeah and again this is not forcing nothing 
the only one well, second my camera's doing the matrix the only thing the only weapon shaitan the devil has left in his arsenal against you if you truly if you if you're true to what you say if you truly are admitting you believe allah is the only one worthy of worship if you truly are saying you believe muhammad is the messenger of allah and yet you're not bearing witness to that then the only thing that the only weapon that shaitan has left on you is procrastination is to yeah. delay you yes hoping that he can delay you long enough that you will die before accepting it so you need to look in the mirror and ask yourself this question why am i resisting what is it that's holding me back is it if it's because you drink if it's because you've got a girlfriend if it's because you like to smoke a blaze if it's because you like night clubbing yeah if these are the reasons these are not reasons not to accept islam yeah these these are, these are not reasons these things will dissipate in time when you start growing in iman do you get me yes. so these are not reasons to hold you back from accepting to bearing witness to the oneness of allah and muhammad being his messenger because that is what's going to save you effectively all right take care dude uh, br brother but yeah you've got our email address i've put it on the screen i'll put it up uh, i'll put it on uh, again um, please uh, email us if you've got any further questions uh, or you'd like further clarification or if you'd like us to uh, send you a free Quran, uh, we'd be happy to try to arrange that for you. Okay? All right. Okay. Where, where right. is your email? Uh, I, your email? I, 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 I've, I've put it on the screen. It's uh, This is on the screen now, efdawa at gmail.com. Uh, when you play back the video on YouTube, you will obviously be able to come to the point when you were on and you'll get the email there. But you can write it down now if you if you wish. Um, so if you require any further information, please do um, contact us. And, uh, you know, sometimes, brother, it might seem like you're being pressured or, uh, you know, uh, but we we want what's good for you. <laughs> we don't want you to leave without goodness. So this is why we're so eager and excited when we feel that brother might be taken. But obviously, there's no compulsion in religion. There's no forcing in religion. <laughs> but what you can do, brother, tonight is just put your head onto the ground and just say, God, please guide me, help me, and get me to the truth. And if you give me the truth in my heart, I will accept it. At least do this, yes? And if you don't want to give the shahada publicly, at least in private to yourself, say that, Allah, I believe in you. I believe in your prophet. I believe in all of the prophets. At least do that privately. And then when you're ready to give it publicly, then you can, you can do it publicly as well, okay? Thank you, thank you. All right, it was very nice very to meet you, brother. Very nice, nice to meet, meet you. Too. I respect you. Thank you very much. You know. Thank you very much, brother. You have a lovely evening. All right. Take care, brother. Good night. Nice. Thank you. Just a quick one for the people in the comment section who said, "Oh, you're pushing him." This, that, the other. Understand something: how we operate and what we do. There are many, many people in his position who are holding back, delaying, thinking, taking time. Who may hear us the way we're trying to explain to him that look, there's nothing to wait for. And they might take their shahada. They might say, you know what? I'm going to do it. What am I holding back for? I was thinking like he is. But honestly, these guys make sense. Do you understand? So yeah. we have to present this. And, you know, because it logically it makes no sense. Now, yeah. I think the Kadha thing was just a, a smoke screen, to be honest. It's Possibly. Yeah. And Hamza, you know what it is? If you, if you um, saw your brother, your sister in humanity in imminent danger, there was a cliff or there was a big hole in the road. Yes. Wouldn't you be eager to try to stop them from falling into that? Yes. Wouldn't you plead with them? Wouldn't you say, come on, please take it, accept it. Don't go down there. You're going to get hurt. It, it will destroy you. It's destruction. Of course you would do that. So there has to be an element of, uh, there has to be an element of uh, not pressurizing, but when somebody has... Reality check. Well, exactly. And when somebody has accepted it already... You're not telling them to accept something. They've already accepted it. You're just literally asking them to, to, to sort of say. One of the things I, I was chatting to Dr. Imran and, and, and as I was chatting to Jordan earlier about a brother he met, an English guy. He's a mechanic, yes? And he came up to Jordan and he said, oh, um, sorry to disturb you. I don't mean to disturb you, but are you Jordan M, you know? And uh, he said, yes, yes, I am. And he said that, you know, I just want to thank you because uh, I've been watching like your videos and everything else, like EF Dao and yourself and everything. And Alhamdulillah, I reverted to Islam, you know. 
So the thing is, what what really pleased me was the fact that Subhanallah, there are probably, inshallah, Allah has guided people out there that the dawah has reached. We don't even know, you know. And and the other thing it does show as well is that there are probably probably a lot of Christians out there, atheists or agnostics out there, or people of other faiths who actually do find the arguments of Islam, the dis the discussions that we have, very logical, very rational. And they're struggling to accept it because obviously the, the, the you know the dogma that currently exists within society and family pressures. And really what I want to say to you, brothers and sisters, is that you know it, it, go wherever the evidence takes you, go ever, go wherever the truth takes you. And the circumstances of uh, or the or the uh, effects of or the reaction of people, uh, don't worry about that as much. I know that you have to be worried to some extent, but don't be worried, overly worried, because on the day of judgment, everyone will be judged separately by themselves. And those people who might criticize you today are not going to stand in defense of you. And you will not have an excuse to point to them and say, oh, it was because of them I didn't accept it. So we'll all stand in front of Allah by ourselves and we'll be judged individually for what we do and what we don't do. If you, if you want a free Quran or you'd like to have a private discussion, maybe you don't want to come online, please take our email, uh, contact us. And, you know, we, we, we do this behind the scenes as well. Mashallah, we've done shahadas completely offline because the people don't want to be uh, in public. And that's absolutely fine. The important thing is that if you're ready to do the shahada, you're ready to give the testimony of faith, please don't delay it because as Hamza said, you know, there's no guarantee that we're waking up tomorrow. There's no guarantee we'll even go to sleep tonight. Death death can come at any time, and we know that. So I just wanted to sort of ad address that. And it's very much the heartwarming that there are people out there who we probably will never meet, and we probably will never know. And alhamdulillah, Allah has, uh, has guided I, 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 I had a sister come to my shop yesterday from Belgium. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and she she come she moved to London now. She took shahada in in Belgium and came so came to London, mini hijra. Yeah, Mashallah. and she said it's because of watching our videos, the my videos, alhamdulillah. That, that she took a shahada. Alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. And so it's just like you said that we're you're affect, we're affecting people, and we don't even know we're affecting people. Mashallah. Well, Allah Allah uses whoever He wants to to guide the people, and today we're lucky enough that we've become a small instrument in 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 a few people's uh, journeys. And uh, tomorrow, maybe Allah chooses somebody else. But at the moment, Alhamdulillah, it's a real privilege and a real honor um, that when brothers and sisters tell us that they, they took the shahada and maybe we had a very small small part to play, but we had some part to play. Uh, we're just grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to uh, put us into that position because all good, all good comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we're very, very grateful. Uh, may Allah truly make us grateful as well. Um, uh, should we get any of the other guests on? Because I, I suspect that they're all Muslims, aren't they? Sam UK is a waste of time. Who's okay. Masihi Muslim? That doesn't sound like an actual Muslim. It might be a Christian. Uh, so Masihi Muslim, if you want to put your camera on so we can identify you and then you can switch your camera off uh, before we get you on. But we do need to see your face on the backstage, not just a blank screen. So... If you can it's an please. interesting name because uh, Masihi is often used by Christians. They call themselves okay. Masihi, particularly from the Indian subcontinent. But okay. it's interesting because Masihi, it refers to the term Messiah. And it's got, it's got the word Muslim on the end. Now, Muslims obviously believe that Jesus is the Messiah, peace be upon him, because the Quran calls him the Messiah. Yeah. So <laughs> it's not really a, a, a good or a you know, poignant point that he's making uh, but with his name. Yeah, sure. But if this is a Christian, I don't, maybe come on and we can have a conversation. Also, just keep in mind, um, we have about less than half an hour to go as well before the show ends. Yeah, um, Masihi, you put your camera on, but it was just a dark um, patch. We have to actually identify your face. We can't just get you on. Uh, and that applies to you as well. Uh, as well. Sorry, Albizu uh, X, we need to see your face. We can't just um, uh, to, 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 sure. to, uh, to get you on like that. Um, yeah, so I think while they're getting their cameras sorted, um, bring on Sam, he's probably got some. Yeah, let's uh, okay, let's get Sam on then. Sam, come on, then it's your lucky day because uh, we weren't going to get you on, but you're on. How are you doing, Sam? You're right, yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you guys All doing? Right. Not too bad, Sam. So, Sam, what would you like to discuss today with us? Well, the last week we're talking about the hadith, 
yes. uh, to do with the with the breastfeeding. And I looked up the hadith on sunnah.com. Yes. And the wording is is a sukkal. So when you read that, what is one meant to understand by that? Uh, Sam, you're misquoting the hadith there, I think. No, look look up sunnah.com. Yeah. Uh, Imran, you're muted, Imran, you're muted. Uh, you just need Sam, you tell me what you think about that. Yeah, I think that's probably the strategy that I should have adopted. No, I'm, I'm just saying, if you go to sunnah.com, go to say, say Muslim 1453C and read that, I mean... Okay. Yeah, go on, it's Sam, clear. read it then. Pull it up okay. and read it, Sam. It says, Messenger of God, Salim, the freed slave of Abu Hudefa, is living with us in our house. And he has attained puberty, one sec, as men attain it, and has acquired knowledge of the sex problems, as men acquire, whereupon he said, suckle him so that he may become unlawful in regard to marriage for you. Okay. For you, he. Can you pull up the hadith and get the Arabic, and because I've, I, I, no, I know. No, no. That the... So that's not even an issue. So what? If, if yeah. let's look, let's. Okay, so you've read the English translation. It says suckle. What does that mean to you? You know, as in put the mouth to the nipple. That's that's what you're thinking, right? Why are you thinking that, brother? Because it says suckle. Because no, no. But why? Uh, why I... are you thinking that? Because now we're talking about. Because I want you to think. This is a. Because uh, I want you to understand now what you're thinking. Does that mean give no, you no, the, I'm, saying, I'm saying Sam, this is the Sam, word you Sam, one second. I'm going to just try and establish something here. Yeah? So we have a society in which the women cover. They wear hijab, they wear jibab, they're completely covered. The, we have a society in which you cannot go out and display yourself. Uh, the Quran gives I, the ayah. I understand all that. Sam, I'm listen to, Sam, listen to what I'm saying, otherwise I'm going to remove you. Because I think you're a waste of time, my personal opinion. Okay? Now... What, so we have this society that, we're, that, that doesn't allow uh, any interactions between uh, uh, non-Mahrams at all. Okay, it doesn't allow this. And this person's person has raised the child from a young age. So they were a slave, they freed them, they kept them, they raised them as their own child. And then a, 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 a law has come that actually your, your adopted children, they actually are not. You can't you can't take them as your own children in terms of your their sur your surname etc. They they are not actually you, you can look after them but they're not your children anymore. And so now we have a grown we have a grown uh, uh, someone who's gone through puberty, and that father and the husband is who husband is saying oh actually you know I'm I'm quite worried about this because you know he he is not he's not related and he's a grown and he's a man who's gone through puberty. What is it that uh, how should we resolve this? So I want to understand this. Yes. So you're saying the prophet has said to the person, peace be upon him. Yeah, I know you're worried about this person being alone with your wife. Why don't you let him suckle her? Is that what you're saying that he said? No, I'm saying okay. the wording. No, no. I'm, I'm asking the you wording. Forget no. We don't understand. Before you go to the wording. What I'm going to say, yeah, discard it. Is... Word, Sam, but before we come to the wording, I want you. To, I want to give you understanding. Are you telling me that in this society where the the, the situation I've described to you? The person who is who's come to the Prophet peace be upon him and is concerned about the fact that this strange this man who is now gone through puberty is living with his wife is now he, 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 they don't want he, he can't be alone with her. That and you're, you are saying that the solution the Prophet peace be upon him gave was to for them to uh, skin to skin contact suckling. Is that what you just is that what you think? No, what I'm saying, yeah, the, the hadith should be discarded. That's what I'm saying. No, 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 not no. Your your understanding should be discarded. Uh, no, no, no. The decent because the wording is wrong. No, it's not wrong. It's because your understanding of the wording. It's your that's understanding wrong. that's wrong. No, so it's you're a... saying the word used here is wrong in here. No, not at all. I'm not saying that. So now, what word... so, so, no, the hang on a second. What, what, in second, Arabic, Sam. what the word mean? What happened? I must. What historically happened, Sam? Well, how do you know what? How do you know what happened historically? Uh, were, you, were you there? How do you know that Julius Caesar was alive, Sam? Yeah, I don't know. You don't know. Do you, do you believe your great 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 grandfather was alive? Yeah, yeah, I assume he was. How do you know that? You weren't there. Yeah, I wasn't there. So how do you know he was alive? Tell me. Because this is how, from me looking at uh, the history of people. This is what's happened here. Yeah? No, 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 no. How do you know your great great grandfather was alive? Because it explains why it exists now. Because that's no, how the world works. It doesn't. It does. How does it, it does. show that? Tell me their name. Yeah. I want a name for them, please. Well, I haven't got the name. So how do you know they existed? 
Yeah, because uh, this is, it seems likely to be true. So this is the problem that you have, Sam. You say you don't know how history works. <laughs> but do I need to know that? Yes, you do. Because if you're making well, a claim about... I'll tell, you, I'll tell you why. If you're making a claim and, about and, the situation... Sam, the point if you're making is, a claim, Sam, wrong. Sam, if you're making a claim about the situation, then you need, to, you need to establish that. Now, we've already given you the explanation. How did this happen? The milk was expressed and, and this boy was given the milk well, to drink. Yeah, and that who, who, happened. Who, how do you know that happened? Because it's recorded. But how, how can you trust that source? How can you trust any source, Sam? Exactly. You got to, you, exactly, no, no, that's the question to you, Sam. How can you it? trust any Sam? You believe in the Quran? Yes. How do you trust it? Tell me. I've told we're, you. We're I having, it last we're having week. the same conversation we had before because your yeah. your, your, your approach is the same. So, do you believe no. in the Quran? Yeah, we. I, I will explain to you why I believe in the Quran. No, no, no. Can First, I, no, no. You believe in the Quran. I want you to tell me why it's trustworthy. Tell me. Yeah, because of what it says. No, no, no. That's that's circular. No, it isn't circular. Yes, it it, is. How is it circular? Because that's not going to tell me why the text is reliable. Why is the text okay. reliable? Okay, can you, can you tell me yeah, uh, who, who God is? I want you to answer my question and not well, divert. Can, can you tell me who God is? Do you believe in the Quran or you don't? I, I, I told you I believe in, God, in the Why Quran. Do you believe in the Quran? Sam, I'm you trying to say, that? can you tell me who God Sam, is? Sam, you're not answering the question. Why do you believe in the Quran? Tell me. Because of what it says. What does it say to you that makes you believe that the Quran is reliable? Because it talks about creation. It talks about... Uh, you know, so human history. It talks about uh, things that you can preserve using science. How, does, these things, how does any of those things tell you it's reliable? Because you can test it out. Can you tell me if any verse was added or taken away from it? No. Well, God. So it it is from God, yeah. Then how I, do you know? Well, how do you know it's reliable? Everything in the Quran is there. Nothing added. Nothing taken away. How do you know this? Because if it's from God, yeah, then God will make sure I get whatever He wants me to read. You're, you're making an assumption here. I'm asking you, how yeah, is it reliable? How do I we know? Think, but then my assumptions I'm making are based off what the Quran says. I can, I can say, okay, the Quran makes these claims. I can go out in the world and test it out. And so far, all the, how all are the you claim going to test, is true. How are you going to test, Sam, that the Quran is complete without anything added or taken away? No, because I trust God. So you're not able to test that? No. Of course you can't trust it. Of course you can't, uh, you can't confirm it. You can always, whatever God says, and you, if you believe this is from God, then you can say, okay, if this is truly so this is God, you know, we you you're saying complex. that you believe in the Quran because you're blindly following it. How am I blindly following? I just said, yeah, I read it, understand it. It's you guys blindly follow well, it. I'll tell you how you said, uh, Sam, I will explain to you. Uh, yeah, not, you, you, you said just now, you said you're unable to verify if anything was added or taken away from it. Yeah, that, that, that doesn't said, matter. Well, that, then if it's corrupted, then how would you accept that it's preserved? Because if, if, it's, if it's from God, then it won't be corrupted. Why do, believe from God? God? Yeah, why do you believe it's from God? Yeah, why do you believe it's from God? Why do you believe it's from God? I just said because because it makes some claims and you can go and test them test them out of them claims in this world. Which which claim? For example, the you know creation, things are created, things don't just uh, happen naturally. Things okay. uh, like, like like the uh the, the the rainfall, the way the the the, the seas what, what, what are the, the what does the Bible say about those things? Similar things, it says similar things. So you believe the Bible is the word of God as well? Yeah. And what does this? What does the Hindu book say about these things? Uh, to be honest, I I, I don't know much about the. Uh, well, if it says, the Hindu if it says the same things, so if the Hindu book says the same things that things are created, they're not they don't just happen by accident. That God creates these things. Would you believe the Hindu books are a word of God as yeah, well? If the Hindu books, yeah, you know, co coincide and you know, sort of like uh, similar to the the Quran and the the Bible, yeah, then I would believe it. But they are, they're but, not. Yeah. Do you believe in the so, concept of the absolute truth? Yes, I do. How would you know what's true and what's not? You wouldn't know. You just got to base it on, uh, you know, what you observe. But how would you determine what's true? By observation. What are you observing? Is there some what way, some what have you say? observed? What have you observed? Sorry? What have you observed? I've observed, like, you know, things in this world, like, you know, uh, life. I've observed, you know, like, 
you know, everything he observes his life, you know, he's... Uh, well, you've you observed the duck. What does that prove to you? Sorry? You observed the duck. What did that What did that prove to you? That a duck is, a, you know, an animal. And a living... what, did that, what did that prove to you? What did that demonstrate? It just demonstrates that it's a living animal. Well, what does that demonstrate with regards proving anything? Well, one thing is, yeah, it's like where, where did it come from? Yeah, it's all like thinking, you know, did it, how, how did it come, come, come about? You know, it really came from dust. How did it, you know, come to be? I did say earlier, Sam's a waste of time, didn't I? <laughs> See, you, you, you guys don't get it. Uh, yeah, you guys blindly follow, it, yeah? follow your own, uh, own beliefs. And they don't coincide with the ground, Sam. and then you make out other people as if they're the, the, the blind Sam. following it. Sam, the problem here is that you the Quran says it's preserved. We we believe it's preserved. We have a reason to believe it's preserved. We know how we know how the Quran was revealed. We have we know how it's been preserved, and we have a way of testing for that. Okay. Now you you don't you deny any mechanism, uh, any history, and when it comes for it strangely, when it comes to Islam, you, you deny any history. And you okay, say can, that there's no way to question, access. Yeah? You say you asked in answer to the question, "How do you verify?" You say you weren't there, so you deny any access to history. Okay. And uh, therefore, uh, how, second, do you, Sam, how do you listen, the listen to the Sam? Listen to the conversation before you have before you start, you know, having a, a freaking out. Yeah, listen to the conversation. You don't have a reason. You don't have a way of establishing what was revealed to the Prophet peace upon him has been received by us unchanged you have no way of doing that you admitted that yourself i had i don't know but what your answer is it it doesn't matter now that's a problem because it goes against the whole idea that the quran is preserved empirically verifiably now you so you're stuck in this scenario now the reason you're stuck in this scenario is that you you discard the the muslim understanding of how the quran came and you deny even the way that the quran came to us really you deny that and then what okay. you do is you go to and wait one second. Then you do is you go to things that don't in your that don't fit in your mind. You think of the I mean this thing. I mean it's really a reflection of your mind to think of it like this. I've painted you the scenario of the society. I've told you exactly what it would have been like. And the and the scenario you're, you're proposing this is what this hadith means is completely bizarre. I mean really it's completely bizarre what you're saying. And we have it, we have actually a. Um, we have actually uh, the the biography of these people. It explains exactly what happened in that scenario. Can, can I read it? Oh, what you're saying is, sorry. Can I read yeah, it? Because what it is, you see, I, I think we should let Sam go, and, and I think we should clarify. Can I, can I just ask you one question? Yeah, how how did the prophet know he was getting revelation from God? Okay, Sam. Before we go there, Sam. Before we go there, I'm gonna just quickly, very quickly, say something to you. Sam, um, it, it, what, what you're saying in English, the wording is like that, right? Now, the question is the mechanism of how the milk was actually given to Salim, right? The Sahaba, the companion who was the adopted son and reached puberty. That's the question. Now, what you're saying is because it says the words in English here, because you did admit last time you don't speak Arabic, okay? So from those English words, it seems like, my God. This looks like potentially a physical interaction between the adopted son, who's a grown uh, boy now. He's reached the age of puberty and he's now had to, astaghfirullah, uh, go against all of the Islamic tenets, which is to cover your aura. That suckling beyond two and a half years old is actually not permitted because there is a limit to how long you can suckle your child for in Islam. You can't ch suckle them till four or five. This is the beauty of Islam that even stipulates these things. So what the scholars would then do, uh, Sam, first of all, they would look at the Arabic and what, what the potential meanings of those Arabic could be. That's the first thing they would do. The second thing they would do is they would look at other hadith that may elaborate how this mechanism was. So, for example, it's only taken me like five or ten minutes to, to find certain narrations. So it's narrated by uh, in the Tabaqat uh, Ibn Sahl elsewhere that, Sal it. that, Sal that Salha, Sah Sahla would pour her breast milk into a utensil every, uh, every each day for five continuous days and Salim would drink from it. 
he did not directly drink from the breast of Salah as it is not permitted to expose one's aura in front of a non mahram adult, let alone him suckle her, right? Thus, the objection raised by some non-Muslims that this was an immoral act has no significance for Salah did not directly suckle him as he did reach puberty. Imam Ibn Hajar al Asqalani, may Allah have mercy on him, has also mentioned this in his uh, Al Isaba uh, Fit uh, Tamiz Al Sahaba. Uh, see Tabaqat Ibn Sa'd 8 271 and Al Isaba 4 337. Now, this has just taken me five or ten minutes to research this and find this. So, there are lots of scholars who've given elaboration on this. They look at, and this is this is the thing, Sam. That you obviously deny hadith, you, you or you deny, you, or you look at certain hadith and, and you look at them, look at them in English, and if they suddenly don't seem right, you reject them. What, what I would do, uh, 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 Sam, is I would say, okay, let's see what the scholars have said. Let's see what the Arabic actually says, because people sometimes translate things, right? Um, and they translate it in the in what they think is 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 right. Um, but it may not actually mean what what it actually says. You have to look at the Arabic. You have to look at the scholarly understanding. You have to look at other hadith that collaborate. You have to look at Islamic jurisprudence laws as to does it break any fundamental laws? Would the Prophet sallallahu would have would he have encouraged something that Allah has ordained to be haram, forbidden, for example, that Allah has said that you know beyond two and a half years old you can't physically suckle. Right. So we look at all of these things and then we realize that actually it doesn't mean that the problem with you, Sam, is that you've already got some predisposed uh, ideas. You've looked at the English. You don't even know the Arabic. You haven't translated. You haven't gone to other scholarly opinions or other hadith that may shed more light onto this situation. And you've simply jumped to conclusion. And I think that's not an, a very academic way of doing it. Uh, that's a very emotional way of doing it. And unfortunately, this is what we expect from non-Muslims. This is the sort of attacks that we expect from non-Muslims who just cherry pick, cherry pick translations. They don't know the Arabic. They don't look at the Arabic. They don't look at the scholarly opinion. They don't look at the explanations that are given. Uh, they don't look at the jurisprudence, the laws within Islam, the structures and how that would actually work. You, you haven't done any of that, Sam. And so I think it's disingenuous, really, of you doing that. Yeah. Okay, can I ask you, how did the Prophet know yeah, he was getting revelation from, from God? Can you, can you deal with what I've just said to you first? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I just said, yeah, at least like that, yeah, I will just, uh, I would not really accept it. And, and right. I understand your point, you do your research, whatever, yeah, but that's a different topic. But Okay, Sam, so that's fine. So the questions like this, I'm not going to accept them. Can, can I, I just kick him? Can I just kick him? Oh, yeah. you kicked him. I mean, I give you him a thunder about him. Kicked what You kicked him, man. What am I doing here? Yeah, no, I'm just saying that you give somebody a long explanation and you explain the nuances. Just, I'll give you another example. I mean, this comes up all the time. In, in the Quranic translation, sometimes it uses the word beat. Okay, beat means a, a physical chastisement that is going to cause pain and it's going to cause injury. Okay, but when we look at that, when we look at the hadith of the Prophet, وسلم, you're not as a husband permitted to cause pain or mark, or do anything like that. And this is why when we look at the hadith, Ibn Abbas, عنه, he says, this is for something very extreme that happens within a, a marriage, i.e. you suspect you know, uh, your partner is cheating. And it's more of a handkerchief. It's more of a, a miswak or something along those lines as a very last resort just before the marriage is about to break down. And that beyond this is divorce. And so there's a whole process that is discussed before that. But, the, but there is categoric statements of the Prophet ﷺ that you're not permitted to cause any physical pain or mark. So therefore, that word cannot mean beat. But this is the nuance of, of language. That's why it's very, very important that, you know, as, as people who are studying anything in life, okay, when you see a particular term, don't just take it on face value. Oh, that's what it must mean. You've got to really look into things deeply, understand what, are the, what did the Prophet understand by this? What did he explain about this? What did the Sahaba understand by this? What did the companions, what did they say about this? What hadith do we have to explain this? Okay, what does the ijma, the scholarly opinion say about this? What is the consensus about this? That, that's a more academic way of looking at things. Just cherry picking one word, cherry picking one thing, 
assuming something that's not the, really the way to 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 do, to do anything in life to be honest um nazan brother sorry we haven't heard from you again do you want to say anything oh uh, uh, no i'm good thank you lovely okay mashallah you're always good nazan um shall we get any other guests on i don't think i think uh, uh masiya muslim you haven't put your uh, camera on still and we haven't identified you um and it's coming up to midnight should we um Call just it a night, boys, or do you want to just risk this? It's going to be a stupid point, isn't it? no, no. But you, he needs to put his camera on. That's the rule. We've got to identify him. That is the rule. And and uh, just a blank screen won't do, I'm afraid, uh, Masihi. We need to see your face, mate. So, you either show so us how, your face. How, how, I mean, how dirty minded do you have to be mm. to, and to just assume that this must be what happened? Mm. I mean, it's just, just if you just look at that society, you know that this is not what I'm thinking can't be what would have happened, right? Mm. I mean, the everyone's covered. You can't interact with anyone who's not related to you. The whole issue was because the person's, uh, you know, the father figure in this scenario didn't like the fact that this person was spending time uh, with his the person that had raised him because now this Salim is beyond puberty, and so that was the problem. So imagine the solution to this is yeah, just get naked together. It's just Stop what it. is wrong with your mind? I mean, what yeah. is wrong with your mind? Yeah. For you to think that that's probably what's going on. I think he's got bigger problems than that. Yes, yeah, subhanAllah. I, I agree with you completely. No, but, but also, this... Imran, you know what it is? It's like we, we've heard the saying, a little bit of knowledge is dangerous. And, 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 and this is what happens. And this is where we have to have the academic, humble attitude, the, uh, um, in, uh, you know, educational, uh, you know, um, uh, humbleness that you know just because there's an arabic language and somebody has translated it in that way could it mean that the person thought that was the best way but in terms of 7th century arabia what would that have meant it's important to know because you know language is something and we need to be careful about that and and this is where if you're humble with knowledge, you're less likely to fall apart on these type of issues. You know, if years ago, if you said to somebody, give me a light, okay, it would have meant different things in different parts of the world. Even today, if you go to certain countries in the world and you say, give me a light, they'll give you a lantern or they'll give you a candle or they'll give you a flame, okay? Um, in certain other countries, they'll realize, oh, you mean you want to light a cigarette or you want to light a cigar? OK, so language is like that. And, and until you uh, appreciate that, that let me just see what do the scholars say? What was the seventh century interpretation of this? What was the hadith? What were the, what were the collaborating hadith that support uh, either this idea or that idea? This is this is having, uh, you know, humility um, and not being arrogant and not just thinking, oh, it must mean this. And I totally agree with you, Imran. You know, if you're going to interpret things in the most gruesome, most, let's say, explicit of ways, then uh, I suppose you're not going to care about all of that. And that's the problem, really, you know, fundamentally. Um, okay, Hamza, you, any you last know, words sorry, before Bob. we go? Oh, um, yeah, book club tomorrow. Hamza what time? 9.30. Continuing this book. So last week we did the... Um, the rise of the Judeo-Christian science, uh, sorry, uh, evidence for God. And now we're going to do chapter two, which is the, the comeback by the atheistic community um, and Darwinism and all that nonsense that challenged the Judeo-Christian flex. So that's tomorrow, inshallah. Just as you know, it's only interactive with members. So we do the live, me and Yusuf Pond, as I read. We switch off the comments and then after the reading, then we switch on the comments for members only. So only members can comment. Then Yusuf does one and then I let everybody else in. But by that time, Yusuf's gone. So if you want to participate and engage with what's being read and such and ask questions to Yusuf, you need to be a member. Just so you know. Um, yeah. Lovely. Dr. Imran, you've released a couple of videos on your channel, haven't you? The Metaverse, you've done the... Uh... Metaverse. Yeah, I, 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 the the uh, Metaverse Dower was a video. It's not interesting conversation with the Christian mystic. Uh, that was up. That was up. Uh, check that out. I'm going to try and release. I'm gonna, I've been very bad at releasing videos, but because the winter's gone now and we're sort of calming down, uh, you'll be more regular uploads. Hopefully, I was planning to do one for tomorrow, but it depends on editing, so uh, I may not get the chance to do that. But it will be up soon. Uh, interesting topic. I hope you guys like it. And also one for my Urdu channel coming up. Uh, 
probably within a week, inshallah, for that. Alhamdulillah. So keep your and eye on that. We see your regular appearance at Speaker's Corner and occasional videos people are loading up. Um, inshallah. Are you doing anything else on your channel specifically, or is that all? Yeah, I, I was recently interviewed by a brother um, on his channel. Um, the brother's name is Sal, S U L. Um, I forgot the name of the YouTube channel, but if you just search my name, um, you can find the interview, and we covered uh, issues about Christianity and how to give dawah and stuff like that. So uh, it, when they search your name, are they searching Nazambo or are they searching Naza? What are they searching for exactly? Um, I don't know. Um, let's see. Nazam 44. No, that doesn't work. So maybe <laughs> Nazambo. It might come up as Nazambo. <laughs> oh, just a quick one as well. I'm trying to reach out to Khalid Yassin to try and get him into the arena. Because like I said, he's my inspiration to do what I do. Uh, so if anyone has any links, please uh, email me. So the way to contact him, because I know he's active again, doing the dower in uh, New York or somewhere, I believe. So it'd be nice to get, um, get him. So Nazam, have you found it? Uh, no. <laughs> um, but um, you can, um, I posted the video on my Twitter page. So you can, if you go to my twi Twitter page, you can find it on there. Lovely. Because Nazam, if you can't find it, I think it's going to be difficult <laughs> For the people in the street yes, to find uh, it. Um, yes. Uh, uh, did I? For, um, yes. Yeah, sorry. The YouTube channel is um, Islam for All. So Islam and the number four and all. Islam for All. And recently, the brother interviewed Shabir Youssef. So yeah. Lovely. All right, so with that, um, and as far as my channel is concerned, I've been very lazy and I haven't uploaded anything, and I keep promising I will. Uh, I'm not More serious promise. stuff, please, uh, Abbas. Yeah. More serious I'm, stuff was I'm not going to promise anything, but inshallah, Allah will help me to upload more yeah. things, inshallah. Uh, I think with that, guys, um, it's just gone past midnight. Uh, we've uh, uh, got no more guests on now as well, so we're going to wish you all a, a good night, inshallah. But one last thing I'd just like to remind the brothers and sisters, uh, please go back to the Friday stream with Ummah Welfare Trust. Uh, we raised, uh, with the brothers at Ummah Welfare Trust, we raised money for Afghanistan. Uh, mashallah, the target was 30,000, but Alhamdulillah, Allah blessed you with all uh, with all generosity, and, it, and it's gone over 80,000. Um, okay. Let's try to get to 100,000, inshallah. Just go to those links. Those links are still active. And inshallah, if you've already donated and you can donate a little bit more, then do that as well. Okay. And if you haven't donated, please don't lose this uh, opportunity to help our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan in, in great need. Uh, with that, I think Jazakallah Khair. One second, I just have to highlight this, highlight this comment before we leave. Go on, Because this is the comprehension of people. I mean, we, we, we have a stream today for over two and a half hours where we're inviting you, Mithras, and anyone like you to come and challenge Islam, come and question Islam. Where are you? Yeah. And also, you know, this question about what happens to people leaving this religion, talk to some of the converts, reverts who come into this religion and what they have to go through and, and, and how much turmoil and how much rejection and ridicule and disrespect that they have to go through. Talk to talk to those people as well. If you truly have a heart, you know, don't just look at the. Some Muslims who I mean, the loads of Muslims that come to Speaker's Corner who've left Islam and they're they've apostated and they come on YouTube channels and they have their own channels and they glorify almost the fact that they've apostated. Who who who's um who who's touching them? Who's saying anything or doing anything to them? I've debated apostates at Speaker's Corner openly. Nobody's touched them. Nobody's done anything to them. But talk to all those people who've accepted Islam. And see how this liberal Western society is so tolerant uh, to those people and how or their families and their friends. The second you accept Islam, and I challenge you, just put on your Facebook, I've become a Muslim and see how many people unfriend you immediately. OK, and then tell us about how people are treated when they leave Islam. Don't be a hypocrite, my friend. Yeah, don't be a hypocrite. Anyway, with that. We'll wish you all a, a great evening on a positive note. Please go back to Ummah Welfare Trust and donate some money, inshallah. Jazakallah khair for joining us. Pray for us that Allah keeps our intentions clear and clean. 
for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that we are not clouded or confused in any way in terms of why what our intentions are. Uh, they should be purely for the sake of Allah. And anybody who's contemplating Islam, if you want information, please email us. We'd be more than happy uh, to send you our information and have a private discussion with you to answer any questions that you might have. Jazakallah uh, khair for joining us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.